Let's have a look at the Fuso starting grid and confirm the lineup for you. And it's Luke Yulton, SP Tool, Stone Brothers Racing that's got the pole position. Great performance yesterday and broke the back of the Ford Performance Racing Team Vodafone stranglehold in the recent past. It's the all green Botlow car alongside. Then on the next row of the grid, we see Garth Tander, Nick Perkat, together with Michael Caruso and Greg Ritter. And remember, as Matt said a little bit earlier, it's the co drivers that predominantly start this race. Then it's Rick Kelly, David Russell, Jack Daniels Racing, alongside Craig Lowndes and Warren Luff. Lowndes now 147 points adrift in the championship. Ken McConville has done every 500 race since 1993, bar one. This is his 19th. Scotty McLaughlin making his V8 supercar debut. There's Tim Slade and Andrew Thompson. Uh, car 47 being docked five spots for a pit lane infringement on Friday. And uh, Jason Bright and Andrew Jones in position 10. Boy, Stevie Johnson and the Dane, and Alan Simonson good. make up 11. Lee Holdsworth has the super experienced Craig Baird alongside him. Tony Dalberto and Dale Wood. Tony missed the corresponding 500 last year with chicken pox, but they drove together at Bathurst. We've already mentioned Ingle and Clint. There's Mark Winterbottom, second in the championship. Position 15, Stephen Richards will get him underway. Moffat and Alex Davison will be beside them. Todd Kelly. Todd won this in 2003 at this track, the 500, with Mark Scaife. He's got Tim Blanchard, Fabian Coulthard and David Bernard. It's David's 150th championship race. Jamie Winkup now leads by 44 points. The winner of the last 500 held here back in 2007 alongside them, Wall and Pitha. Then it's Dean Fiore and Matt Halliday. Matt's based in the US. He made his 500 debut back in 2004 with a bloke called Mark Larkham. Steve Owen and Paul Morris alongside him. They had a DNF, by the way. Alex Premer and Jack Perkins, car 33, position 23. Patrizzi and Reed make up 24. Carl Reinler said he was very unhappy with that car. Expect drastic changes. We now know that Owen Kelly stepped in to pilot car number 51. And then at the rear of the grid, Will Davison will start. He's got Johnny McIntyre and Taz Douglas and Scott Pye make up. Position 28 for car 30, Team I Select. Scott Pye making his V8 supercar main game debut. Matty was bringing the 500 back to Sandown, a good idea. Well, if you ask these people here, they'll tell you yes. They're five to ten deep, virtually right along this main straight here at Sandown. The grandstands are chock-a-block at the moment. We haven't seen a crowd like this at Sandown for a very long time, Matty. It it's almost standing room only at the back of the stand at the moment. This crowd is going to be treated to a fantastic start. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's awesome. It's a great sight. And this start will be ultra important. We saw all the lunacy of yesterday, but the guys would have started with less than half a tank yesterday, about 55 litres today with a full tank, 120 litres. And we said yesterday also that the look of that surface there is a lot different in grip from the dark surface to the light surface. And Yulden and Canto, huge pressure on them. Green light on there for them. Green light indicates the co-drivers. There's Will Davis right down the other end of the main straight. So it's Yulden versus Canto. Stone Brothers Racing versus the Bottolo entry out of the FPR stable. Nick Perk had behind, got a really early jump. He might have jumped the start. He may have jumped the start. The defending Bathurst champion, either that it's one of the all-time great starts, but you'll oh, pulls it through, and the Fujitsu entry of Ritter on the outside, up to turn two. He'll take the advantage and take the lead of the race. Great start, Greg Ritter, on the clean side of the road. Got away really well, and for sure there'll be some drama with Perkett. Either the rest missed the start totally, or Nick jumped. And the report from Owen Kelly in the background is that he thinks that Pepsi Max car is on seven cylinders, so he's right at the very back, started from pit lane. Look at this on the grass, Alex Davison in the Norton entry on the run up the back straight. And 51, you can expect to see it in at the end of this lap. Tremendous start, Greg Ritter, locks a cold front left tyre on the run into turn nine. And look, he's dropped the spot already as Luke Gilden now climbs back above. So Yulden was steady, Ritter was aggressive, Perkat was straight out of the blocks, probably too early. Lots of huffing and puffing already. Well, that was Dave Stewart, who was running from the starting grid back to the pit bunker. That's what the huffing and puffing was. So here's Perkat in recovery. There's a little question mark there at the moment as to what happened at the start. 
can hear in the background that Pepsi Max car sounds absolutely dreadful. So their day's off to a rotten start at the moment. The order is Yulden, Ritter, Canto, Percat, Luff, David Russell. It's a great shot of the cars exiting turn four up against the concrete wall, about to make the 275 kilometre an hour run north. Still that threat of weather in the background as we jump on board here with Will Davison. Now, he's already to 20th. And watch for him to try and get the low fruit as early as he can. I think it's a smart move, Croppo, to put him in the car and park it like that. The other thing that happened there was Scott Pye started from pit lane in the Taz Douglas car. Now, have a look. For sure, that car's moving before anybody else by a mile. So Nick Perkat will be very interesting to see what happens. Well, it's a judge of fact, so officials will instantly react, and if there's going to be an issue there, we'll no doubt find out pretty soon. Here it is again in replay from a different angle. Focus on the car in the second row on the... It looks like he went early, didn't it? Mm. Now, fastest man on the racetrack at the moment is Will Davis, and no surprise, he's in position 20, as you saw on board there a minute ago. This is still the replay of the run down to turn one. Here we are with Dean Cando. Just uh, only just got her away. It's got about 95 kilos of fuel over the rear axle there at the moment. Cold tyres looking from all the angles into turn one from the Botolo entry. And here is Owen Kelly coming in in the Pepsi Max entry. So they obviously had dramas right at the very start in the garage. They've not been able to rectify it. A second is the margin between Yulden and Ritter. The corresponding race last year at Phillip Island with Nick Perkat and that car stalled on the grid, remember? That's right. I had a delayed start. Yeah. This car 15 of David Russell paired up, of course, with Rick Kelly. So they're trying to sort themselves out midfield here. Andrew Thompson in the Lucky 7 racer is alongside the Jack Daniels entry. In front of them is Scott McLaughlin, leader of the development series. Starting inside the top 10 in the 500 with Jonathan Webb. So Luke Gildon, 1.1 seconds clear. He's got the rhythm back. Greg Ritter in second. Then it's Canto, car 55. Warren Luck. He's paired up with Craig Lowndes and he's fourth. McLaughlin put a nice move on at the other end of the track and look at this stuff going on here. Andrew Jones in car number eight. He's having a battle with David Russell and you always hold your breath at two and three. It's so hard to get two V8 supercars through there and it's an absolute traffic jam in that mid-pack. That's Jones. And there's a healthy battle going on there with Percat McLaughlin, uh, Jones, Russell. They're all guys that are elite competitors out of the DBS. As we see Alex Davison up the inside now at the top of the hill. Will Davison's complaining over the radio that the engine's got no sniff. So maybe this has got a little engine drama going for car six at the start of the race. Big brake lock up. Oh, Tim Blanchard. Uh, he'll find the dirt on the oh, inside. He's the he already oh. brushed it. He's a little bit more than brushed. Yeah, a bit of rivet rash there because... <laughs> He rushed straight off the outside of the road. He couldn't stop the thing at all. Couldn't turn it. We saw a huge amount of that in the last couple of days. People not being able to get through the left-hander at Danny Nong Road. So that's an awkward moment for him. But he was also trying to protect that front left tyre. We're on uh, in the garage, I should say, at Pepsi Max as they try and figure out what the issue is with the ends there. Meanwhile, Paul Dumbrell, who's in the championship leading car, starting 19th. He's had his hands full. He's up to 17th. He's caught in all this. There it is. Just came in a shot there. Tucked in behind Alex Davison. And Will Davison's right behind him now. So Will Davison's forged his way up there to 18th from the back of the grid to be right behind Dumbrell. Spud, hate to grab it at this critical time. I know where you're back, mate. You're so looking forward to the Sandown 500. What a great way to start it. Oh, it's been a catastrophe all weekend, unfortunately. Um, nothing's nothing's going well, that's for sure. So this is uh, oh. really disappointing. These guys. Sorry, mate. I think there's a. Oh, yeah, there <laughs> is. <laughs> Sorry, Larko, to jump in on you there, but Christian Clean's been involved in an incident, and uh, that's down at turn nine with Tony Delberto. And Delberto's the other car, and I just want to car. double check that he is in the car, and he is. So this will trigger the safety car, as you said. So that was an awkward moment. This will compress the field again. We'll come back to what's happened down there with Greg and the Pepsi Max car very shortly. Safety car boards and flag, safety car boards and flag, safety car stand by. Have a car off in the run off that stand. This will also work for Will Davison. It'll compact the field. So there's a bump from behind. 
So he got help. I reckon Christian Kling got bumped from... I think it was 17, which would 17? be uh, Alan Simonson. Yeah, OK. So there's the bump, and there's the bump. Yes. So it wasn't actually Christian's fault. That was Alan Simonson into the back of the Super Cheap Auto Commodore. For Simonson, this weekend, it's his 11th race team of 2012. He's been doing sports car racing in various places around the globe been a busy time for him but this is a great frustration for both Dale Wood and Tony Delberto it's Tony at the wheel he's tried to get it out there but it's beached the belly of the car sitting on the gravel there's no way it'll be moved okay, mate, without uh, assistance from the our volunteer officials they've now snatched it out of there but uh, he's lost a lap in that process that part of the circuit has proved a handful for almost everybody our championship uh, leaders included and Alan Simonson Alan Simonson has come down there with an enormous amount of speed he had nowhere to go but drilling into the back of Christian Clean who had nowhere to go but straight into the rear of Tony Dalberto so first safety car out and about no sign of the wet weather yet Will Davison starting from position 27 he's up to 16 he's now tucked in behind car number one with Paul Dumbrell behind the wheel well, he stopped. This is a strategy for keeping the fuel tank topped up. Brad Jones Racing do this a lot. They brought Fabian Coulthard, which David, David Bernard, but the Fabian Coulthard co-driver in. And a lot of the guys doing the same thing. So there's four or five cars now just topping that tank up so it gives them extra strategy and gives them a little bit further for their next stint to hopefully get them through the minimum 54 laps. This is the flexibility that Mark Larkin talked about. It gives you some other options with your strategy play a little bit later in the day. So four or five cars in there. That was uh, Blanchard, car number seven. I had a quick look at the right-hand side there and it didn't seem to concern any of the crew down there at Jack Daniels, so they sent him on his way after brushing that wall. So. Luke Yulden is the leader. He was stretching his lead probably towards two seconds over Greg Ritter. And of course, now that lead has been evaporated. Dean Canto in third. What those guys are doing, because they don't have track position, by the way, is by topping the cars up, they vault over everybody when the leading cars all come in for their stop. So it's like a little free kick. Puts you out of sequence, but it can pay dividends later in the day. Larko? Yeah, sorry, we just managed to grab Greg. We've been both watching the television screen here, mate. Yeah, disappointing, I know. Uh, you think they'll get the car going again? Uh, uh, you know, the guys are determined, I think, to try and get it out there. I mean, they've worked, as I say, all weekend so bloody hard. And and uh, to be sitting in here not even making a lap is um, is pretty hard to take. So uh, that they'll do everything we can. Obviously, the race is done. We're, we're over and out. But we need to obviously try and... Uh, Find some speed in the old girl as well. We had a few dramas yesterday, which held us back pretty pretty badly, and, and we'd like to like to see if we've actually fixed those problems. Cheers. Thanks. Good luck for the rest of the day. Two-time winner of the Sandown 500. In fact, he was in the car the last time the pole sitter won the 500 here back in 1996. So Luke Yulden has a big job ahead of him, but from starting from position number one, he's still got that. As we get underway again, and there's Will Davison. So continuing to push his way. Through this field, he gets ahead and gets another spot. That one of Michael Patrizzi in car 91. So that sneaks him up to 17th now. It was pretty lively there with Matt Halliday around the inside of Paul Morris. Michael Patrizzi actually, when he fired down the inside, overtook Davison for 16th position. Now I think on the back straight they're just reversing that again. So this will be important for Yildon to do some really good laps in this next phase of the race. Black flag. Pit lane drive through penalty. Car number 17. Alan Simonson for the incident at turn 9. So just confirming it's a pit lane drive through penalty for Simonson for that knock on effect that ended up putting Delberto into the gravel. He's currently 14th, so that'll take him out of 14th position. And a tour through the pit lane for that infringement down at Dandenong Road. There he is in the background, back of shot. You just see him coming into the pit there now to exercise that penalty. And no word yet on any infringement from the start. They might have gone away with it. So, car number nine, with Luke Gilden behind the wheel. Shane Van Gisbergen's co-driver is doing a good job in the early stages at the Dick Smith Sandown 500.
smooth car is a fast car. Live coverage continues here at the Dick Smith Sandown 500 with Luke Yildon, car number nine, the SP Tools racer, leading the way. Greg Ritter, 2004 Sandown 500 champion with Marcus Ambrose in second. And this is where the incident took place that forced the safety car earlier and Stephen Richards has had to cut the corner there in the Orcon Steel car. So Stevie's now in position 12. One of the things that you always notice here at this, whether it's uh, this track, whether it's sprint racing or endurance racing, is just how much debris ends up on the racetrack. And uh, after Delberto had been in the gravel, all the area between turn nine and turn 12 was basically covered in rocks and already very early, see a lot of debris. Well, that was Will Davison saying he's got no brakes. Now he's about seven or eight seconds off the lead at the race at the moment and down in the Ford Performance Racing Garage with his ears on and watching this car intently and looking at the data will be Tim Edwards. You there, Tim? Yep, I'm here, boys. Uh, very much of a nail-biting scenario for you, Tim, because when you, you know when a car's in the mid-pack, you've got to manage two things. You've got to try and make speed but not get tangled up in other people's dramas. Yeah, well, we saw plenty of that yesterday, didn't we? So we're, we're sort of right in the mix at the moment. I think Will's got a bit of a challenge on his hand now because he's actually caught up to sort of the five cars in front of him. They're all pretty quick drivers, so he, he's got he's made 13 places getting past a lot of the co-drivers, but, you know, he, he's in an area now that's going to be hard work for him. He mentioned just in that radio message that we intercepted, I'm not sure whether you caught it, but uh, he said he's got no brakes. I'm sure he, he's speaking generically, but uh, I imagine that's because he's just tucked up under other cars. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's just a temperature issue. So obviously we, we can we can tune that a little bit for him because we can put more water in with the water brakes. So um, we'll try and help him out there. And it, he'll also make an effort to get clear air going down the straights as well. And Tim car number five, he went the other way. He put Stevie Richards in first, started from 15th. So he's up to 12th. Now you're happy with a solid job there? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, same thing. He's, you know, there's a group of cars there that are all competitive drivers. So, you know, he's done a good job. He's moved forward a few places, and hopefully by the time he gets out of the car, he'll be maybe another four or five places higher up. Hey, Tim Scavey, geez, those drivers complain a lot, don't they? <laughs> I'm not going to comment, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mate. We'll see how it unfolds for you this afternoon. It's the best way to deal with the scape question, isn't it? No comment. <laughs> hey, guys, a bloke I've been really keen to catch a word with this weekend. Hey, Ross Stone, sorry to interrupt you, Ross. Clearly Stone Brothers Racing got the mojo back. Uh, Luke Yildon doing a great job out in front. But what's changed, Ross? Something's clearly changed this weekend. 
Oh, just out of, out of the truck, the cars were pretty good. And um, we just made progress from there. Come on, mate, you went pretty well on the test day I was watching the other day. You've obviously threw a few hot bits at them. Oh, no, just, uh, just everything's working good, as I said, right from when we unloaded out of the truck. It was really good, and we've just been able to massage it and tidy a few things up. But it's really early in this race. Yeah, and I guess a new deal on the horizon, mate. That's probably put a bit of pep in your step. Not sure what you're talking about there. Um, yeah. About this, maybe. <laughs> How did I know? That was the answer. Come and we'll see if we can grab a guy over here who's trying to keep really calm, cool and collected Shane Van Gisbergen. Hey, it's kind of weird, mate, isn't it? Because uh, usually a co-driver feels the pressure of the lead driver being out in front there. Boots on the other foot. Yeah, it's not too bad, but uh, it's only lap 14 of 161, so we're just cruising at the moment. Luke's out front doing a great job. Uh, the faster cars I can see are starting to work through, so uh, I think it'll be another uh, 30 or 40 laps before it'll be interesting. And what are you thinking, mate? You leave him in there for a double stint and you go right the way to home, or are you going to share the load? Yeah, well, as you know, he's got to do 54, 55 laps, so uh, we get him to that point. We'll see what the fuel and the safety car situation's like, and uh, then we'll decide when I'm going to jump in. All right, mate, you and the team are doing a ripper job this weekend. Keep it up. Thank you. Yeah, so it's a long wait for Shane Van Gisberg and remind me never to play poker with Ross Stone. <laughs> Doesn't give away a thing. Back after the break. The sun shining here for a quick burst and Luke Yulden continues to lead the race but there's been a change at second place. Dean Canto, the bottle entry, has now gone up. In fact, everybody has pretty much gone up a slot because Greg Ritter in car 34, the Fujitsu GRM car, watch this, lock up, spin, turn, stuck on the side of the road and had to wait for the entire field to come past before he could rejoin. Former winner of this race in his 14th 500. So a mountain of experience for Greg. And a 
costly mistake. So he's now down in position 25, Larko. Yeah, I might just see if I can mix just about the bolt and uh, no, get his drink. Mate, I was actually standing outside watching the sheer dejection on your face as you watch that happen, mate. Where to from here? Do you tweak your strategy or just press on? It's a long day. Uh, uh, to be honest, I don't know. My engineer's in control of that, so um, I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll, he'll adjust accordingly and... Um, we we'll just have to truck on from here and move back up the field. Yeah, but I mean, you've got to keep chin. I reckon both you guys in the car and the car this weekend have been very, very strong, and it is a long way to go. Yeah, look, it, I mean, it is. It's really early days, and um, we've seen in these races in the past, particularly halfway through the race, and maybe with a bit of weather coming along, we're, we're definitely still in the race. That's what I'm saying, mate. Keep smiling, stay positive. That's all you can do, Larko, isn't it? At this point, lap 19 of 161, and obviously disappointment there for Michael Caruso. As bit of contact between that's Craig Baird on the left hand side in the Falcon the Irwin Falcon against the right hand side of Cam of Cam McConville in the HRT car and right in behind there is Steve Bridges those blokes have been having a, a real battle over the last couple of laps well and over quite a few years as well and if you think from position nine you've got McConville then Baird then Richards then Alex Davison then Paul Dumbrell so all former yeah. drivers and especially Baird McConville and Stevie Richards had some ripper battles over the course of their careers. This guy that we're looking at here at the moment, car number 19 is running fifth, Scott McLaughlin. He's leading the Dunlop series, a development series for V8 supercar racing. Got some new livery on that car this weekend with the Finnish crane company Hyab. And he's doing a really good job and you rated this combination quite highly coming into the race scope. Well, Jonathan Webb's been doing a good job also, haven't they? They've shown really good speed and young Scott probably in terms of his relativity to the main driver probably one of the closest so he's been doing a really good job all year in the BBS. Yeah Scope it's not easy for Jono Webb he's flat out down here in the garage. Uh, Jono Scotty McLaughlin doing a great job out there you can put your feet up for a while. <laughs> yeah I could get used to starting races like this. Uh, Scotty's done a brilliant job all weekend it's as everyone knows it's his first time at it so I think he felt a little bit of pressure but yeah, he's done a brilliant job and yeah, he just keeps moving forward so looking forward to getting in shortly. On paper, it looks like one of the great matchups. Are you finding that now that it's coming together, that you and he are working well? Yeah, a lot of things are just really gelling well for us. Obviously, size is a major thing for me. I'm one of the tallest guys in the category, and it's always tough to find enduro driver to match. So, Scotty jumped straight in. Yeah, we've uh, teamed up really well together, and they said uh, if this is any sign, we're looking forward to things to come. Going beautifully, John. Put your feet up, relax. Thanks, mate. It's pretty cruisy in there. It's uh, not cruisy for Alex Davison. He's got a drama going with the Norton car. And uh, meantime, his brother says he's got absolutely no brakes as his description. So Will's not happy. So Alex Davison struggling. Oh, the throttle stuck wide open. Right open. That's all you need. That'll do it for you. So that's a major drama for him that's fired him off the road at turn one. He's had to go straight across to turn two, three and join from there. Here's the super slow-mo replay. Incidentally, for McLaughlin, he's one of two drivers this weekend making their main game debut. It's a big moment for a driver who's come up through the ranks. Certainly. So that young guy that we're looking at before in the white car, pretty big weekend for him, and he's doing a nice job in the top five. So off the road and flying. Alex Davison with a jamming throttle. Not a nice, well, there is no nice place for that in a race car, but this one is particularly tough. There we go on board. And all you can do is dip the clutch. So when that does catch you like that, you can't, you won't be trying to turn the engine off or do anything weird. You just got to dip the clutch immediately and take the drive away from the engine. Even if the engine ends up on the rev limiter, you dip the clutch straight away. Look at all the debris. You, was, you said it before. Yeah. This is, that was where Ritter went. And then earlier, there were cars down the inside. You've got to feel for Ritter in a high uh, visibility moment like that. You're at the front of the field, P2, you rotate it. It's a simple, easy thing to do there. It's a very complex piece of racetrack. High-speed approach, a couple of direction changes, patchy bits of road. Oddly, he's a plasterer. He's not raced since Bathurst last year. He's done a lot of testing with these guys. But the job he's been on plastering is just over the road on the other side of the Princess Highway. We'll be back in a tick.
me know on the radio what's going on with other cars and if I'm getting lapped or whatever, please. Reset the bike for the fuel load and remember cold tyres, cold tyres. So now let's make uh, some use of this clear air. Car number five, second in the championship of 2012, Stephen Richards behind the wheel for his main game partner, Mark Winterbottom, has processed through pit lane, so decided to get out of that mid-pack fight. As we check out this replay of Will Davison alongside Paul Dumbrell, and what a tough run it's been for the Davison brothers. Will has been complaining left, right and centre about this car. No brakes. His brother has just had his car, car 18, fixed in pit lane for an open throttle. And meanwhile, at the back, at the front, we've got Luke Yulden under enormous pressure now from the bottle entry of Dean Canto. Yeah, that was a good pickup, Matt. I was just talking to Timmy Edwards at FPR. That's exactly what they did. Got that car five out of traffic. Sometimes it just doesn't suit your strategy, but the lesser of two evils is not losing the track time per lap. Matty, you're talking about Alex Davison's car and the throttle jamming. These races often produce the most bizarre circumstances, which I believe was a bit of debris from the track. A piece of tape had gone up, got caught, jammed the throttle open, they pulled the lid up on it, pulled the tape out, got the throttle going again, no problem. Nick Percat might have got away with the best start of the year. Officials have had a look at it. They're not going to take any further action, and they're not investigating any further that start by Nick Percat. It was a good reaction then for him to get away as he did, so we thought it may have been questionable. Here's this tight battle for the lead. Now, interesting... They've left Stephen Richards in the car. That means he'll fuel through now to about lap 69. It's two stops for home. So another stint for Stephen, and then it's two back-to-back -back stints for Mark Winterbottom in the number five Alcon Steel Fourth Performance Racing Falcon. Oh, look at the travel. I've never seen the back of the cars use that much travel. The Fujitsu car there, that's Alex Premer's 33 Fujitsu car. And look at the back of that Scott Pye in the iSelect. Look at the amount of travel the cars use. At, uh, at turn one, that's young Jack Perkins in with Alex Premer in the Fujitsu car. And Gary Rogers not here this weekend. Prompo, he's uh, overseas holiday. He's probably nicer. When Ritter... Oh, that was close. When Ritter spun, Gary would not have wanted to be here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Craig Baird is on the tear at the moment in the Irwin car. He's just got around David Russell. And now 
Davison versus Dumbrell. Side by side, up the back straight, 272 k's an hour on approach to turn six. Former teammates, and they they remain good mates. A little gang of three, PD, Will Davison, Jamie Wincup, they're all good friends, but it's cut and thrust out there at the moment. Now, it's interesting because only a couple of laps ago, Will was talking about no brakes and no front grip. Doesn't look that bad. I think it's, it's all in relative terms. So Cando stalking Yulden at the moment. Looks like he's got a quick car. Uh, James Small's just been counselling him on the radio. Just be, take it gently. Think about it. You've got a quick car. If you're going to use it, do it carefully. Great shot. That was looking also towards the west where you can see it's a bit black again. Luke using more of the exit space. Notice that Dean's actually not using much of the curbing at the moment. He wasn't using it aggressively in turn one either in the bottle low entry. And the other thing here, just on the subject of mates, these guys are in business together. They're mates. They've got a stunt driving school. It's bizarre, isn't it? Two. And they'll, they'll sit around midweek and go, you did this and I did that and I thought I was going to do this and there'll be some war stories after all this about who was on top and who wasn't. Did you see us leading the Sandow 500? <laughs> good guys and uh, both with a lot of v8 supercar experience luke's also doing the development series at the, the first three craig uh, more on love driving with craig lounge is also a stunt driver as canto first one now oh, no. so they've just so they've dragged him out because he's getting held at the moment they've yep. taken him out and they're using this we call it the alternate strategy working backwards from the fueling requirement from the end of the race. Dean Kent has one of those drivers who simply looks comfortable in the car. One of the co-drivers that can just jump straight in and look as though he's been doing it all year. Nice and easy into one, please. So fueled up, cold tyres. So it would have uh, burnt somewhere in the order, including the formation and reconnaissance lap, probably about sort of 80 litres. So they bring yeah. it in. They didn't actually run it to empty, then they bring it back to the top. And you heard James Small there say, nice and easy into one, because over the years we've seen a huge amount of the most experienced guys. In fact, Russell Lingle did it years ago. We went out of the pit lane, drove straight down to the first corner, locked the rear wheels and straight out of the race. So it's very easy to make a mistake out on cold tyres with a different fuel load. Something that benefited Dino there was that there was no traffic coming his way, so he had enough time to think about that going into turn one. Didn't have to dodge and weave anyone or automatically start racing anyone. Now, to Canto's advantage, he's halfway up the back straight at the moment. He's got total fresh air around him. So together with car five, both those four performance racing cars now find themselves on the back straight together in fresh air. Doesn't mean much right now, but fresh air gives you lap speed. Down the track, they'll meet up with those that they've been racing. A little second here or there, two or three seconds, can make an enormous difference. Now, that could have the, the net effect of dropping him in front of Luke Yildon, the corrected leader. Very true. And Paul Dumbrell on the previous lap was about four tenths of a second faster. He's currently ninth. He was about four tenths of a second faster than anybody in the top ten. So he's speed, he's coming up behind Craig Baird as we speak. So it's Tim Blanchard in the Jack Daniels entry. A lot of damage. Whack up the behind as uh, he rejoins. And Luke Yildon is doing the absolute perfect co-driver's job. He was under a little bit of pressure from starting from pole. He's Scott. held solid since then. Scott McLaughlin's in as well. That's significant out of fifth place. We'll hold the shot for you here to give you an idea of where your favourite driver is. There's Percat third. Andrew Thompson next. Then Andrew Jones is fifth. Cam McConville, Craig Baird, Paul Dumbrell, Will Davison, Michael Patrizzi, Jack Perkins. They keep looking back in the pack here. And you'll see this big fresh air gap that I was talking about before actually behind this group of cars. So there's car number 49, VIP Pet Foods entry driven by Paul Morris. Christian Clean's in there as well.
There you go, there's Canto in the background, and behind Canto is Stevie Richards. There they are. So they've got this beautiful scenario at the moment of having a wide open track. They can find their own rhythm. They've got good car speed, good tyres. They have got a load of fuel, which they've got to manage. But this is going to give them a little yield, which will pay a dividend to them a little bit later in the race. So Scott McLaughlin comes out in the Techno Autosports Commodore and instantly has Stephen Richards on his tail. Remember, Scott's got cold tyres. He's all fueled up as well. First V8 Supercar main game race leads the development series. He's up against one of the most experienced campaigners out there in Stevie Richards. Car 2 comes in. Nick Perkat. Paul Dumbrell is also in the lane, and the Pepsi Max car has gone out and done two laps. Hey, Matty, I just want to show you a fundamental change down here in this pit stop here on the Dumbrell. The air spike man now is out here in the fast lane with me. The hard thing for him now is he can't see the fill man over there. What he's watching for, look at him looking up, he's looking at LED lights up here above me. As soon as he withdraws the fill, you'll see, bang, he sees the lights. Down it goes, and away you'll go. Thank you. Yeah, they're looking for fuel to come back up the vent side of the refueling apparatus there. And what they've done with those guys, the co-drivers, is they've basically split their stint to give them fresh tyres. So they're not really double stinting them. They're letting them run long. And uh, as we just David see David Russell escape off the road at turn two this is this great shot this is and remember the steve richards david had relatively two. cold tires yeah, so yeah. that's what's uh, hurt him there been in for a stop but of the guys who are going to do not really a double stint but one and a half stints to get to something like 60 laps they've got to do 54 and they put fresh tires on the co-drivers to keep their grip level up and keep their confidence up so Warren Love stays in the car. A very clinical team Vodafone process where they make sure that nothing's a hassle for the driver in pit lane. They don't clutter him with information. They don't shout at the driver. I had a chat to... I had a chat to Casey Stoner, who's uh, spending a lot of time in at Team Vodafone. He was blown away by the processes that they go through there and just how straightforward it is and how easy they make it for the driver as we look at Stephen Richards on the inside of car 19. Scott McLaughlin, but the Toll HRT car of Nick Perkhat has gone wide. Oh, and again. Yeah, so this is uh, cold tyres, full fuel Whoa. equals understeer. And also off the road in car number 22, Cam McConville. He's down in 21st at the moment. So he's out in the, in the weeds, rejoins at turn three. Jeez, he was deep, wasn't he? Uh, and that's filled the front. You can see all yeah. the grass at the front there. That'll make water temperature. They'll have to bring that in and deal with it. Here's the race leader. Race leader, Luke Yulden, stays in the car. The road will be clear when you drop. So that's quite a big mistake there for McConville. And we, the important thing here will be where he comes out relative to Dean Canto. Pit road. Canto will be approaching on the main straight. There he is, top right of screen. It's going to be close. Oh, he's got it easy. Gone, yeah. So that actually goes to the point that I was making before about what clear track does you in the little undercut process. So that's a change for the effective leader of the race, even though Andrew Jones is leading at the moment. He, he'll have to stop, so there's still uh, quite a number of cars, about half a dozen or more, maybe eight cars that have yet to stop. Good driving, Steve Richards. That was a very spontaneous pass then. He had to make that stick. He fired down the inside. He knew that Luke Yildon was on cold tyres, and he got down the inside. It was a very good authority pass. Doesn't it show you the difference when they come out all fueled up on cold tyres? Luke Gilden has had this thing on rails for, what is it now, 20-odd laps, 30-odd uh, laps, and you come out full of fuel and cold tyres, and the thing's a massive handful for the uh, first few turns. And that's what's happened here to Cam McConville. So he's come straight out of the pit lane with uh, 95 kilos of fuel, cold tyres, and no chance of stopping it at all. Look at that, he's just gone straight on by. Look at how wide Gee. he goes. Yeah, because yep. you're trying to drive the car to the rhythm that you've just spent, well, three quarters of an hour or an hour driving it to, and all of a sudden it won't cope. It's very difficult to describe what cold tyres feel like. Mark can very aptly describe it. You know the routine when you go out there in these conditions. It's really tricky to manage. 
We'll come back to that. We'll take a break. That's the collapsed end of the super cheap auto Holden the Commodore. Front. The front as well. Yeah, both <laughs> ends just for equal measure. Christian Clean will be back in a tick. You may get some traffic on exit. Just be careful. What's the blend line? For the cold side. Remember the cold side. Welcome back with the first round of pit stops still playing out. We've got a new race leader in Will Davison. So there's only two cars in pit lane. That main straight having uh, Alan Simonson come up. Race control only been activated once with the safety car. And on the track, a good battle going between Nick Perkat and Paul Dumbrell. You're riding with Dumbrell in Jamie Wincup's number one car. Watch him pull up alongside him here. Maximum attack down to turn one it's caught so many people out and they're having a really good battle your effective race leader at the top of the queue of those two have pitted is dean canto car 55. awkward entry of david bernardo fabian coulthard I just saw uh, after one of the stops in the break, Christian Clean's car had a lot of fluid coming out the back. So Race Control has been having a look at that and the corresponding number of drivers are talking about the track being very slippery at the moment. So I think that's hurting a few people down at turn one. Race Control are onto it. So that super slow-mo is pretty radical, isn't it? The way the cars leap over the curb. Scopey made the remark a little earlier. How's the travel of the loaded side right rear wheel and tire and the suspension? It's just massive. Now, interesting, just going back to that battle between Luke Yulden and Dean Canto, five laps apart in their strategy. Of course, when you bring car number 55 in a little bit earlier, there's quite a difference in the fuel that it's required to bring it back to full. 
They haven't burned as much out of the bottom of the tank as now Dumbrell has a look down the inside of Percat and bingo, he gets away with it. And in the last round of pit stops, the, just, just check out what happens here. Andrew Jones came in in car number eight and he slotted down to 21st position. So there was a problem in pit lane that we didn't catch, but maybe the team boss can tell us. Bradley Jones, you're on the line. Yeah, hello. Hi. How are you going, guys? Um, I'm not 100% sure exactly what's going on. Andrew came in for an unscheduled stop and um, the brake pedal was on the floor. So there's a bit of mayhem going on here. And from a driver's perspective, as you blokes will know, there's nothing worse than when you've got no brakes, especially at a place like Sandown. So we pulled it back up off the floor and pulled the brake blanking out of the front of it. And, uh, you know, he jumped on it a couple of times and had a pedal. So he's out there on a, on a set of greens, um, hopefully. Um, without a problem, but we'll just have to wait and see. Because he was having a pretty good run, Brad, wasn't he? Excellent run. He's, uh, you know, time's really good. And the reason we ran him a little bit longer into the stint is we wanted to open opportunity later in the race. So we sort of figured we'd sink him back into the um, into the pack a little bit. But with fuel in hand, as the race unfolds, it'd be much better for us. So, you know, it's just, uh, man, it's the sort of weekend we're having down here at BJR. It's just shocking the team BOC cars so fast and you know in the Lockwood cars quick this morning but he's stuck in traffic so not going our way this point in time. Bradley uh, I'm surprised to hear you say that you had blanking in endurance races and this place is pretty hard on brakes. I'm surprised you had any blanking in the brake ducts there because you make a lot of temperature over a period of time here. You do but we, we make a very specific target of what we want with the brakes and we knew what we were you know what we were running at and so we, that's what we felt we needed to run so works for us most of the time but you know that mightn't even be the problem you know, brakes go to the floor not usually a blanking issue so he seems to have it sorted out but as you can see from behind me there's plenty of chat going on and i'm trying to get to the bottom of it my experience says that um, if the brake pedal goes to the floor once pretty good chance it's going to happen again you know, brake fluid boils it gets up in the temperature it doesn't cool itself down and it certainly doesn't run through a radiator so uh, I think he's in a fair bit of trouble but hopefully uh, hopefully he's not. You spent a bit of money on Friday so between the boys in the box we've chipped in we've got a cushion for you so to bring your wallet height back up so you can see over the dashboard on the run back home to Aubrey. <laughs> oh that'd be really helpful I appreciate the support from you folks. <laughs> Anytime. Because <laughs> you know it's sincere too. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you Bradley. Thanks hey, guys. Paul Chat Dumbre to you later. Paul Dumbrell is just on the fastest lap of the race a 111.295. Good time. This is a good battle here with Steve Richards right up in behind. Life. We're going to stay on board, have a look how close they are, and some of the body language of the car here. Some really good fast corners and some great curves. him longer as a result of what happened in that incident down at turn nine looks like they're leaving him in the car to get that second driver requirement minimum completed there's only one guy out there that's yet to take the stop and that is will davison who earlier was talking about brakes and front tires now he's talking about rear tires he's got a 31.3 second lead he's yet to stop david bernard is next in the queue so uh, any tick of the clock, he'll be in. We, uh, our uh, predicted range of fuel is around about uh, 44 odd laps. So uh, somewhere in the near future, we'll find he comes in. It's been a pretty good recovery. There we go. So uh, in this lap for car number six. And that'll be John McIntyre in. So uncoupling the helmet vent. Fifth gear into the back straight, 275 kilometres an hour. It's a real roller coaster into here, Scafie. And one of the real dramas, Neil, the difference between the driver change at Sandown versus Phillip Island. Because you've got the big long run into the pit lane at Phillip Island, it's a 40k zone, probably 400 metres before the pit lane. And here, you come out of this corner, have a look at the proximity of the last corner to the pit lane, right there. 
So the driver's got very little time to loosen belts, get radio leads out, unhook the driver, cooling. I just want to quickly show you guys, we talked about this little LED, LED light and the fuel filler. Now, here it is up here, you can see it up the top of the boom here. They'll do the driver change, air spike in here, fuel man over there. Now, the reason the air spike man is on this side is because there's such congestion over the side with people, with the fuel man and two wheel guys on the other side, they've decided to bring him out here. Now, watch the light, see the two little green ones there? That means those guys, the wheel guys are done. And watch for the fuel light. Okay, you'll be clear to go, clear to go. Make sure your co-driver light goes on. Clear to go when it drops. Thank you. Clumsy stop inside. Go, 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 go. Light on. Car gone. Yeah, he, he struggled with the belts, then he got them jammed. There's a lot to do, though, which is the point that you're making. They try and use as much automation, but in the end... And he's confirming his radio comms. There's so much to do. There's the cool suit. There's comms. There's the ventilation. There's the belts. The belts have got to be pointing in the right direction. The release knuckle has to be centred again so that you're not trying to feed the belts into the latch and it's actually open and they won't lock. That's happened to many of us. Well, that's what happened just then. He couldn't get the, the crutch belt done up. And then when he went to grab the right-hand side waist belt, it was caught below him. So he couldn't... He couldn't get those weight belts uh, locked in, and then you can't put the other belts on until you've got the weight belts done. It's actually a really uh, difficult sort of logistic issue in terms of the way you get out and get back in. And before you know it, you're up at turn one with three or four other guys around you. 100%. They're on a charge. Paul Dumbrell's just backed up with another fastest lap time, 111.245, and he is chasing down Luke Yulden. He's done it three times in a row, three laps in a row for Paul Dumbrell. So incidentally, Johnny Mack has dropped into the field here in 10th. Remember, they came off the back of the grid. Ooh, these awkward opening moments on full fuel, cold tyres. It's a great Dick Smith Sandown 500. Stay with us.
The Kiwi Johnny McIntyre is behind the wheel of car number six after Will Davison's opening stint. They're in position 11th, started from 27th. Lights are on for the trading post Falcon. And behind him, that's oh. Cam McConville. Oh, that's always nasty at turn one. <laughs> Welcome this. aboard, Johnny. Woo. Bang. <laughs> He's only been in the car about 300 metres. Scared the life out of me. <laughs> Comes straight out of the pits, he's been haunted. <laughs> Nobody's won this race from any further down than 15th on the grid. <laughs> Will Davison didn't like that. But I've got to tell you that Paul Dumbrell is making a charge from 19th. Car number one is now up to 5th. What do you got, Moretz? Will and uh, Mark Witterbottom just debriefing. And Will, uh, for you, good opening stint. Tough, hard work out there. It was. I mean, I just wanted to keep it clean. Obviously, we, we made pretty good headway. I got from, you know, 27th to 16th and only a couple of laps, but then it was pretty tricky, actually. The track's very slippery at the moment. Um, obviously, everyone's struggling with a similar problem. I had a lot of speed, but not in the right areas, and I didn't want to do any risky manoeuvres. So, you know, we made good progress, so it's a good start. Well, you've got about 50 laps or so before you jump back in. What do you do now? You eat, rehydrate? Yeah, just drinking some of this magic green juice. And, uh, yeah, Don't ask what's in it. <laughs> no, I don't even know myself, but it tastes all right. But uh, yeah, just put some you know, dry gear on and just chill out because it's going to be a pretty uh, full-on run to the flag. And uh, let's hope Johnny has a clean run. Uh, he's going to have to do 50, minimum 54 laps and then it's going to be a sprint to the finish. So, as I said, the car didn't feel great, but we seemed a lot quicker than everyone around me. So uh, let's see if we can tune it up over the next few stops and have a rocket at the end. All right, mate, we'll let you put your feet up and grab a drink. Might just have a quick chat to Frosty, who's currently just sitting here watching. Uh, Frosty, this is a tough tough part of the day, just waiting to get in. This is uh, kind of painful, actually, but Richo's doing a belter of a job. He, uh, we got him out of out of that traffic into some clean air, and he's doing some good lap time. So um, I'm happy sitting here while he's trucking along like that, and he'll pull it in for his service soon, and uh, we'll swap some drivers. and. Run to the afternoon. It's a strange way to go racing this endurance stuff. How soon can you get in, Frosty? Well, they, they have to do 55 laps, so... Uh, but the, the flip side to that is you need to do 65 laps before we can do one stop home. So I think you'll see a flurry around that 65 to, to 75 laps. Um, guys are out of sequence a little bit, but about you know two laps on the track, a guy went longer, he's about one second in pit lane. So uh, we've got about four earlier than others. We need to get that two seconds on track, beat him in pit lane, good driver change, and uh, it'll be around that 65 to 75 lap. It's a good plan, good luck, Frosty. Sounds good, thank you. Sounds pretty composed there, Mark Winterbottom watching on. Steve Richards doing a very good job. That was a good call of FPR to get them out in the clean air. And what the real rule for the driver duration is, is that the lead driver uh, can do no more than 107 laps, which based on 161 laps means that the co-drivers just see Luke Yildon running wide there down at Dandenong Road. He's been getting pressured a lot by worse. Dumbrell. Exactly, and that, that was the move. So he just ran wide a little bit. Dumbrell did a good job not to make contact there. Would have been very easy as Wink Cup watches on Dumbrell forging forward. So 107 laps and 54 are your 161. And Dumbrell's been reeling off the fastest laps that Matt made mention of a little earlier. The latest ones are 111.9, correction 111.19, and uh, he'll be in the tens shortly. We're on board with him here at the moment. It's interesting that if the key runners, you know, the guys that we've talked up a lot over the weekend, you know, you look at the Orcon number five car, the Botlo car 55, car nine, the SP Tools car one and triple eight from Team Vodafone. They've all gone with what we're describing in here is BBAA as the driver play. So co-drivers in the first two stints, regular drivers in the third and fourth stint. However, car number six, as you just saw with Will, because of where they've qualified, they've had to play the game differently. It's the ABBA strategy. So it's A, B, B, A. So it's the ABBA strategy for the trading post boys. I need a little bit of music to go with that. Stop the commentary box they cold, did, didn't it? Yeah. Now the other thing, uh, there's four seconds difference of fuel three, between three, um, three. 55 and 9 in terms of when they came in. So Kando is fueled through to lap 73. So you'll look to see him, even though he's leading at the moment, come in earlier. That's as far as he can get in terms of fuel range, using the averages of 46 laps fuel range. Where car 9 who he was battling earlier is out to 78 laps and of course slowly but surely as you'd expect 
the Vodafone boys are playing into this game as well, Barretts. Oh, Jamie Wincup just with his feet up on the tyres, enjoying this at the moment. T teammates going well out there, Jamie. Yeah, um, Peter's doing a great job. I don't want to put the mocker on him. Um, he's probably only got 10 laps to go. But um, a lot of speculation before the weekend, you know, big pressure on co-drives and everything. And he's done everything absolutely perfect so far. So I um, couldn't be happier, but as I say, still got uh, a little bit to go. 10 laps away from jumping in, you are remarkably relaxed. <laughs> on the outside, maybe. Uh, no, hey, I didn't have my best day yesterday. So um, I pretty much let the team down. So I've got to, uh, I'll try to step up today, keep it clean, and um, bring the number one comb home. Hard, hard, home hard as, as, uh, as good as I can. Right, Jamie, all the best, mate. Thanks, mate. Cheers. He internalises a lot of this stuff, Jamie Wynn Company. Just saw PD make an alteration to the fuel mixture on the steering wheel. But uh, Jamie wears that stuff on the inside. He doesn't like it. You know, he's just put his hand up then and said it was my mistake yesterday. He really thinks long and hard about his motorsport. And uh, when he has been backed into a corner on a couple of occasions, as we've seen over the years, and the tremendous success that he's had, then uh, he bounces back. So it, the pressure's on for him now this afternoon to do the bounce back. Oh, no doubt. And the great thing about that attitude is and it, it's a good thing for the team. It gives the team real composure when the driver yeah, has actually admitted. He, he said, look, I had a bad day yesterday. Paul Dombrell, conversely, did a really good job yesterday and doing a very, very good job in the first stint of this race. Well, it's the hallmark of a champion that Jamie Wincup has become, that he never puts the white flag up, even when he's having a ropey start to a weekend. Speaking of ropey, car 30, the team I select with Scott Pye behind the wheel. Look at this. And doing what so many have done before him over the kerb on the exit of turn one. Out into the gravel and then the grass. And see the height of that kerb. You use that kerb like a motors like a motocross berm. You run right up on it and actually holds the back of the car in. But not if you run right over it like that. Guys, our motor, multiple uh, World Motor GP champ, Casey Stoner, in the garage at Team Vodafone. And Casey, I know the guys get such a buzz out of uh, you, you being here and I guess inspiring them on a little bit on these weekends. How's this different to your operation? Um, quite a lot different. I mean, um, you know, we basically have the, the, the might of Honda behind us and, you know, we have uh, the whole factory support, effort, everything and, and completely customised uh, prototype machines. So. Uh, in a lot of ways it's very different, but in other ways it's a lot more simplified, um, our racing compared to this, you know, there's so much strategy that goes on involved, uh, you know, during the race here and especially in these enduro races, so um, there's aspects to both that are, that are fantastic and, uh, you know, I really enjoy the, the fact that you do need so much strategy. Uh, in these races and, and uh, you never really know what's going to play out and you know if we've seen so far um, you know Team Vodafone have done a great job and, uh, and pulled themselves well up the grid so you know in, in our racing it's not that simple it's not that clear cut and uh, very hard to make your way through. Speaking of not so simple that ankle of yours all of Australia held its breath when you came off at Indy and, and then courageously got back on and rode. Um, how is it? How's the operation been? Uh, the, the, the surgeon was fantastic. Uh, the operation was a big success. You know, I walked out of hospital, uh, not walked out, but uh, I was allowed to start putting some gentle weight on it that night, and it felt a million times better than uh, than when I went into hospital. So we've uh, we've just been waiting for it. Basically, I'll have to be just very very careful with it. If I go over on it again, uh, I could do some huge damage and, and be out for even longer. So um, you know, I'm thankful that it wasn't quite as bad as as uh, it could have been. And so, uh, you know, we should have no problem being back this year. Casey, just finally and quickly, a V8 supercar still on your radar for one day? Uh, definitely one day. It's, it's been on my radar for, uh, for more than 10 years. So uh, it's something I'd like to do, but have to be realistic about it, whether, um, you know, whether we'll be able to cut it or not. I kick back and enjoy today a little bit. <laughs> will do. Thank you. He loves V8 supercars. I was having a chat to him before. Of course, he's based in Switzerland, so he can't get our coverage, but he's found this little link where he just downloads. He can't get enough of it. I mean, he just he turned up to Bathurst last year just to be there for Saturday and couldn't go home. Had to stick around for Sunday. Wouldn't it be great to see Casey Stoner in a V8 supercar? Back at Sandown after this.
Welcome back as Paul Dumbrell continues this charge throughout the field in car number one. Started from position 19, make that position three now after getting past Stevie Richards. So he'll be handing this car back to Jamie Winkup within the next 10 laps or so in a very good position. And so too for Mark Winterbottom when Stephen Richards comes in. So that's one and two in the championship. A big lock up there. The SP Tools entry of Luke Yulden forces him wide. That was a couple of laps ago and now Luke's down in seventh position. Dumbrell is marching on. Now the co-drivers have passed the minimum requirement. So uh, if they need to strategically now, they can lift the co-drivers out. But for example, in car one, which is the Jamie Wincup car being driven by Paul Dumbrell, Mark Dutton, his engineer, a moment ago said, we're leaving you in, you've completed your co-driver laps, but you're doing such a great job, you stay right there. So that's flexibility that Mark Larkham talked about at the whiteboard earlier in the day. When both your drivers are making speed, it gives you the freedom to be able to play around with what you want to do with fuel and tyres. James Moffat slotting into car 18 after Alex Davison did the opening stint. Scott Pye in car 30. He'll be handing over to Taz Douglas soon down in position 24. So let's run you through the highlights from the start of this race, and we thought Nick Perkat might have jumped a bit early. Well, they've had a look at it, and they said it's okay, so it's a 10 out of 10 start for the youngster in car number two. And the big rush down to turn one. Quite a bit of smoke left behind down the end here of Dandenong Road. Car number seven of Tim Blanchard. Rubbed the wall there, but no damage done. And this was Alan Simonson into the back of Christian Clean and Tony D'Alberto the victim. So Greg Ritter got a terrific start and he was off to such a great run. He was up to second. When that happened, he would go right back to the rear of the field. They'd have to start thinking differently at Fujitsu and Michael Caruso down in the dumps after seeing that. Will Davison started on the rear of the grid in car number six and has forced his way back up through the field. Johnny McIntyre is now in there and he's edging on the top ten. Watch this for Kemba Comble. Big lock up, super deep for turn one, right out into the grass, as far wide as you want to go. And he got back on, but took a tyre bundle with him on the way. Luke Yildon did such a solid, steady job in the first part of this race, where he held the lead, but with Paul Dumbrell on his hammer, a little mistake, and he goes wide as well. And then that maximum attack down there for Scott Pye at the end of the back straight at 270-odd k's on approach to turn six. So a fair bit happening in the 
first 50 to 60 laps here we're edging close to that 100 to go lap mark now the other thing that's really significant is that love is all over canto at the moment as well so pressure on for the lead here dean canto is fueled to come in a bit earlier than warren love looking further down the order here cars 6 and 33 this is jack perkins 12th at the moment jack son of larry perkins former Bathurst winner and he started 23rd he's now 11th that's an outstanding performance Alex Premer his co-driver and Jack that is a very very good performance in fact the Davison McIntyre car and Perkins along with Dumbrell and Richards they've beaten the four cars that have moved forward in this race so young Jack not full time in the series anymore but a very very good job in car 33 for Gary Rogers Motorsport. It's a great little team. They punch above their weight, and young Jack's fitted into that mould very well. He's been able to squeeze in a bit of testing. He, he had a crack in the New Zealand Super Touring car just to try and get some race miles. But, uh, he's frustrated that he's not able to get more regular seat mileage at the moment, but he's doing a nice job out there. So he's in 12th. That's John McIntyre just in the foreground, car six. This is the trading post entry that came off the back of the grid with Will Davison, the alternate strategy for them. So remember that John stays in now for the second and third portions of the race. And this is the battle that I spoke about. And it's lighting up at the front now, 55, 888 and one. It's Dean Cando, Warren Luff and Paul Dumbrell. And Luff is now much, much closer to the back of Dean Cando. He's slowly been dragging him in on the end of the string. It's officially 0.4 of a second on the computer. You can see how tight the margin is. And have a look at the lap times. Canto 12.03, Luff 11.87, Dumbrell 11.4. And he's so, within striking distance now. So he's at that point where when you're the lead car, you see all the colour glimpses in the left and right mirrors and also the rear view mirror in the cockpit of the car. If you see double whammy now, because it's doing the same thing following him. They've really made a lot of ground, especially Dumbrell in the last few laps. And the other thing that we're seeing is that from the west and southwest at the moment, the weather has arrived at about Ballarat, which is approximately 100 kilometres to the west of here. So there's a bit of rain, there's a bit of pressure. So you've got Dean Cato at the front of the field. His 14th 500 start V8 supercars. Behind him, Warren Luff was on the podium in the Sandown 500 back in 2004 with Junior Johnson. Paul Dumbrell, behind them in car number one, the championship leading car, has had a race victory and a pole position in the V8 Supercar Championship at this circuit. And they're all putting down the times at the right time. So, remember that the tyres are younger on the Vodafone cars as well because Dean stopped a bit earlier. And there goes a pass down the inside for Paul Dumbrell. He's flying at the moment. So, is it over? Or are they still going to go on with it, these two? Oh, that's awkward. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no one allows he's concentrating so hard. See, he had the, uh, the bunny in the headlights look there. It didn't blink. <laughs> That's the Brock eyes. We used to say Brock's eyes were like saucers when he was really concentrating, and that's certainly Craig Lance. Look how much they've been, they've dumped uh, road to Canter whilst they were dicing with each other. And most of that happened at turn two, three, because they tried to do it side by side, so it'll take another couple of laps to reel that margin back in. But uh, the tyres on the Botlo Racing Falcon are a little older. That's probably starting to hurt Dean Cando at the moment. Dumbrell continues this charge. And one, of the, one of the GRM cars had been rotated in front of this group. We'll be back in a tick. 62 laps complete. Eyes forward, doing a fantastic job. 62 complete there, mate. About another 11, 12 or so.
driving. Car in front, 55 is for position, 34 is left traffic. You're watching the Dick Smith 500 here at Sandown and we're under sunny skies at the moment. Those clouds continue to build as our main game drivers get ready to step in. So the eyes are firmly focused now for Jamie Wincup. He wants to make amends for what's been a pretty loose start to his weekend. Quite a few offs and a little mistakes, a few little mistakes here and there yesterday in the sprint for the grid qualifying races. And Paul Dumbrell has done a stellar job. He'll hand the car back in a great position, so too Dean Cantor, who leads this race. So that's David Reynolds, bottom left of screen, waiting for his turn. It's interesting that uh, they still haven't unraveled the amount of time that they burnt battling each other, these two. So when they swap positions and PD, Paul Dumbrell, got around Warren Love, they still haven't been able to get to the reconnected point of battling with Dean Cantor. Uh, uh, here's Greg Ritter. Just uh, rounding up car number three there, and uh, that was the real. I saw him go round, but I wasn't sure whether he did it on his own or he got some help. But he was given some help. That's Dale Wood at the helm of the high flex car. So it's the second time round for a spin, but the second one not his fault for Greg Ritter. Oh, that's going to make the fence. Oh, that was close. Andrew Jones in car eight. Now they couldn't change the Bradley Center text. They couldn't change one of the fronts on that as well. It was the right front in the stop for Andrew Jones. That won't be helping its turning performance. No. Johnny Reed in for car 91, Michael Patrizzi, and car three has also entered pit lane as well. well. It's just a waiting game right now. And our extreme slow mo focusing in on car number one up on two wheels. I wonder if that was the move that Paul put on Warren Luff. Remember, he had to sneak through on the inside. It's a drive through penalty. Dale Wood, car three, for his role in what happened there with Greg Ritter that you saw a little bit earlier on the replay. Might be up for another one if he gets Johnny Reed a push. The stewards have done a good job with that today. I thought the call on Simonson, um, the call obviously there was very good, and the call even yesterday with the incident at turn one, when they have immediate effect like that, you know, guys make a decision and get it done. And this is Dumbrell now made a lot of ground right back up on the back of Canto, that's such a big fast corner and this is the area where everybody's made mistakes all weekend down at Dandenong Road, we call it that because it's right next to Dandenong Road, the Princess Highway in South East Melbourne and a, a traditional corner, used to be a much more flowing left hand corner and a big fast in the, this area here, a big fast corner called the Causeway way back ago when the Brocks and the Moffats raced here in the early days of the Sandow 500. Those couple of corners now are a lot different in terms of the configuration. And it's made a big difference in the way you set the cars up as Dumbrell has a little look down the inside of Canto. These corners are so slow at either end of the track and they're so traction dependent, meaning the cars have got to put their power down well. This is the best example. This is turn four. Very, very slow. 75 kilometres an hour at the apex. And the wheel spin's a big issue, mate, isn't it? That's the way that you've got to set the cars up. That's why you see the wheel travel and the amount of uh, movement that the wheel has within the wheel arch 
because the cars are sprung so soft to give them that sort of traction and grip at those places. Then in the fast corners, you've got to try to make up for it somehow. See the vibration go through the car. Sixth gear, 7,500 revs, out of puff. It rattles through the car and the camera head in the car shakes violently. It's quite a harsh harmonic vibration through the car. So that margin's closed down again. Ritter's just in front of these guys, a lap down. This is the race lead, first, second and third. Canto, Dumbrell, Luff, and not far away from handing these cars back and remembering that Canto will be in earlier, potentially, than the Vodafone cars, depending on whether they feel like they're being held. The other thing is that everybody wants to be in a position in this race, notwithstanding weather, they want to be in a position to run full rich later in the day. So they want to try and push off the notion of stopping as much as they can and get every last usable drop out of the car before they stick fuel in. And FPR have already shown, Compo, haven't they, that they're okay, they're trying to run their own race out there. They took Dean Canto and Stephen Richards out of the fight as soon as it started to get that way. They put them back in clean air, so you get the feeling that maybe FPR will make a move sooner rather than later in bringing Dean Canto in for the Bonolo entry. And we've got the uh, team boss down at Team Vodafone, Roland Dane, on the line to talk about the performance, Roland, of your two co-drivers who are driving more like main gamers right now. What a spectacular effort for both Paul and Warren. Yeah, uh, they've both done a great job, exactly what we expected them to do. I have to say, Dean Canto is also doing a great job, which is a disappointment but uh, <laughs> for me, but uh, he's doing a, a really solid job as well. So all these blokes are having a red-hot go, and we're just trying to get really to the window that allows the other drivers, to the, the A drivers, to go flat out to the end, so if, if need be. Hey, uh, Roland, Scapey. It's not as much fun as it was last year, but is it? <laughs> uh, it's actually a lot better now. It's a lot quieter in here. The guys do as they're told. The drivers, yeah. you know, are uh, obedient. I'll tell you what it is, though, Ron. I'll bet it's cheaper. cheaper. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's that much cheaper, actually. I think we nicked the last bloke. Uh, hey, Roland, do you want it back? <laughs> nah, there's a, an age where you become geriatric. I know only too well. <laughs> See you, Roland. It's been great having you. <laughs> Check in with you again shortly. Now, Stephen Richards, fourth at the moment, car number five. Remember that that car stopped a little... Uh, sorry, uh, that, yeah, that car stopped on lap 23 the combination of Stephen Richards and uh, Mark Winterbottom. So that means that he's going to be back in that car in the pit lane very shortly. So keep an eye out for that car number five, Stevie Richards at the helm at the moment. That's Tim Blanchard coming in and Tom Kelly waiting. So this will be the last 500 for the Kelly boys in a Holden. And of course the last Bathurst run they'll do in the Commodore as well taking on the Nissan Challenge as of 2013. So Todd's in. waiting on fuel, waiting on fuel. Fast lane will be clear. Three line off. Waiting on the fuel. Three line off, mate, when you're ready. Fast lane still clear. Fishing in the deck, you'll be going. That, that communication's much better at the Kellys. I've been a little bit critical through the year. That was very, very well done. Nice, smooth. When A little bit like any sport. When things are going well, they don't look like they're in a hurry or a fluster. And that was a nice, smooth, composed fuel stop. Good driver change, good communication with the team. And the way that that rolled out could not have been better. It's David Bernard, position 18 at the moment for Lockwood. Remember, his partner is Fabian Coulthard. As opposed to that, just run on. Well, see those stickers on the road there down by the front right? They actually show precisely how far the cars have missed the mark. It's missed it by more than a metre. Lucky they can get the fuel hose to it because when you run that far forward, you struggle to do that. So young Dave Russell has run on right at the end, has let his foot off the brake. You can see there, there's the white mark. It's almost a metre past. And there's a limitation to the hose for each. Now, car five's in as well. Stephen Richards and Nick Perkett joins in too. So cars five and two in the lane. So this will be Mark Winterbottom in. So some seat inserts being changed there. Radio check for Frosty. Radio check for Frosty. Co-driver light off. When you're ready. Judge over here watching you. Judge over here watching you. Captain, you're going to be clear. You're going to be clear. Matty, that's enough. Clear. Still clear. All good. 
Watching Jardine, go, 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 go. That water you see is replenishing the driver drinking water as well as the brake water. So he's dropped Mark Winterbottom now to 14th. And there'll be another couple of cars round him up here. And then in the background you can see car two per cap Tander and Tander will have stepped into that car. And the co-driver's light just switched off as you said that. So that's the little green light on that left-hand side. Oh. Underneath the windscreen, air time for Lockwood. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. That, that's turn two, across the grass to turn three. Critical stop this one. Canto out, David Reynolds preparing for in. There goes his seat insert. Yeah, boys, I just want to have a little look at this driver change. We showed you these guys earlier in V8 Extra. Now, what's happening, that's a driver assistant. Remember I said about the S-Bike man, you can see him standing on the other side, looking for the little LED. And the reason that is, look how congested he's here. Front wheel man, there's our driver assistant. Fuel man, there's the water coming out. That's because on the other side, they're filling up the brake reservoir. Tim Edwards was talking about the water brakes. They're the little squirters on the front brakes. Come for a walk with me, just see if we can find I want to show you the little seat insert that um, Dean Canto would have used when he got out of the car. There it is on the ground. Here, I'll just jump in here and grab it. So this is a little bit of carbon fibre. There you go. Sorry, Dean, if you could just excuse me for a moment. I'm trying to make some TV. Um, <laughs> He's trying to win a race. Uh, there's, a little, there's a little insert for different height drivers. But yeah, seriously, let's grab a quick chat with you. Mate, that was a great stint. You must be wrapped, mate, because I know you want to make a little mark out there today. Yeah, definitely, that's what we're out there for, but uh, I've done the hard yards, it's up to Dave now to take it to the end, but um, look, the car was going away at the end, it's, I was trying to keep it as straight as I can, but James on the radio saying that uh, that PD was struggling with rear tyre grip, the actual degradation of the rear tyres is quite high, so uh, caught me out a couple of little times, but kept it straight and handed over to Dave. Mate, I reckon you did a ripper job, well done. Cheers mate, thanks. So brake, brake pads here for Triple Eight Team Vodafone, they're doing brake pads on that car to make sure it's got good brake consistency, performance and pedal height late in the race. All right, so the rears are done, driver's in. It's no, slow. No, no, no. I think that's going to get, I think it's going to caught, I'll catch them, that was, that call on that, oh no, it's just stuck up your hook. I thought it looked like it was a slow ride in front, we both looked at each other. Fuel is always the limiting thing, which it's meant to be because there's little restrictor in the flow rate now, brings it down to 3.3 litres a second instead of 4.1 during the sprint races. But I thought they were having trouble then getting the new pads back in with the, the pistons in the calipers far enough back to get the full width brake pads back in, but they got away with it. Oh, Lounsey, that was very deep. He only just got that turned in, so he's made effective ground on Canto. And the way that that's going to roll out now with Dave Reynolds. So, Lounge has jumped Dave Reynolds. And this is a critical stop. It's a bit short of the mark then. Hard to get in and out of these things. That aperture, the gap in the door is very small. And for bigger guys like this, Shane Van Gisberg, and obviously quite a big guy to be able to get in and out, is a real hindrance. This is the pad change. So there's pads out, new pads in. You've got to push the pistons back to be able to get the new pad in because the pad previously had worn. Pumping the pedal there for wind cup, making sure that you've got a brake pedal. And a tear off removed on the windscreen for nice clear vision. So there's a bit to do in 30 plus seconds, 35 seconds. Groovy, isn't it? And he's just, he's just going to get out. So then a little wiggle there to get some tyre temperature. And this will be line ball because he'll have no grip down here. And you've got David Reynolds on the charge and Lowndes oh, has got some wide tyres. He's run very wide. Wind Cup, he'll only barely hang on at turn two. This is fourth position. They're not leading the race, but they're battling for the effective leadership of the race. Now he can breathe easy at turn four because everybody can drive quick in a straight line. And that's the thing, isn't it? When you come out, the important thing is to get through turn one, two, and three and then get a breather on the back straight. But he's got to pull it up and turn it at the end of the back straight and Lowndes has got speed. He covers, wind cup covers. Oh, that's close. 275 kilometres an hour. There's about five millimetres apart. And down in the Dandenong Road, he had to cover him. He blocked him down there, he had to do that. And now 
what Wind Cup will be getting tyre temperature to sustain the lead of this race. And it was stopping at Dandenong on road, turn nine, that was the critical one. That was what I was holding my breath for because the way Jamie had to drive the car off the end of the back straight then meant that it was really over committed beyond what those tyres would normally want to do when they're cold and under pressure. And if he goes on to win this race, he may well look back at how he managed to hold on to it here at turn one because he only just did it. Another millimetre to the right and he would have been over that right hand side curb and into the grass and Lounce and Reynolds would have pounced. And what a healthy battle we've got. This is on board now with Dave Reynolds. You see how close these two Vodafone cars are. 275 kilometres an hour. Look how close! The left front with the right rear of Winkup and Lounds. And have a look here. See that only half a car width. He moved it over purposely to block Lounds to and take any opportunity to pass. And have a look. And to square the front of the car under brakes. Keep a look at that. Look at this. They almost oh. wiped on each other there. Into turn six at the end of the back straight. That's 275 kilometres an hour. And the lead car in the pack, car one, has got cold tyres that have only just gone on and a full load of fuel. A pivotal moment in the Nick Smith Sandown 500. Jack Perkins has peeled off in car 33. That reveals Andrew Jones as the leader of the race. And then the next into the queue is Jamie Wincup. So he's gone back into the lead. What an amazing moment. Driver change here at VIP Pet Foods, car 49 of Steve Owen and Paul Morris. So Paul Morris is out of the car. Steve is in. Fastest lap of the race. Has been done while we're in the break. 111.07 for Jamie Winkup. And this is Alex Premer with Johnny Reed from Techno Autosports down there at turn one. And that undoes all the great work that Jack Perkins did in car 33. 
to move up some 10 spots since the start. And just a squeeze out job from 91 on 33 down there at turn one. And a little unfortunate in both ways because he wasn't quite far enough up there to command track position, but Alex probably shouldn't have turned it in so hard. When they're like that at turn one, and look at that great vision of the car sliding over that. Sometimes when they go in there sideways like that and you get into the gravel trap, they're a little prone to turning over on their roof and uh, got away with that one because all that ground is much harder the way they've manicured that uh, trap. But the way it's gone in there, a little bit lucky to get away with it. But as I said, what he should have done is turned across more gently and not actually made contact. The two cars can get round there together if you give each other racing room. One minute, 10.98 seconds, fastest lap of the race. Craig Lowndes, position two, three quarters of a second off the lead of the race at the moment. This is Garth Tander at the helm. The whole racing team, Commodore, position six. He's hunting Jonathan Webb, fifth at the moment. It's interesting, there's just a whisker over five seconds. Here we go, Ouch. bang. Got him. Oh. So car number 30, Taz Douglas, nails car number 49, and that's going to be a safety car. So uh, Steve Owens in there, and with that tyre bundle there, there's... Milk it, milk it, mate. Milk it, milk it. So I uh, get the safety car. The tyre bundle's the drama there, so Owen's got his thing out. The race director, Tim Schenken's voice there. He's in the black shirt speaking on the headset in the foreground. Chief uh, Operating Officer for V8 Supercars, Shane Howard, with him. Here it is in replay. Taz Douglas down the inside. He was never going to get down there. Dirty side of the road, makes the corner tighter, and he's grabbed Steve Owen in the process. So we're going to squeeze a break in while they clean up the mess and drag the tyres out of the way. This condenses the field and raises our heart rates.
Welcome back. The weather radar tells us there's some nasty stuff coming from the west, although I got a tweet from somebody in Ballarat saying it's shorts material down there at the moment, so there's nothing bothering them. That's us to the right where the arrow is nearby Moorabbin Airport and Springvale. So it looks okay now, but you can see the clouds in the distance. But I've got to say, it's been that way pretty much since early morning, so it uh, hasn't opened up on us yet. The field is condensed. We've passed the halfway mark on our mega wall. Let's check in with Barrett's in pit lane. Many pulled down Rella Warren Love just saw that radar and they both breathed a sigh of relief. That's good news. You won't be out there, PD, hopefully. Uh, won the toss of the coin this morning to start, so thankfully uh, Jamie uh, can manage that. But uh, no, it was a good, good couple of stints out there. Uh, track was quite good and uh, obviously the, the speed of the car was uh, was excellent. It was a great couple of stints, but a bit of competition between you two out there in a couple of moments. Yeah, look, obviously PD had some great car speed there and we we're just we we're just lacking a little bit of front end grip, so the guys made a couple of changes at the pit stop, so hopefully give Craig the car that he needs to get to the finish. Outstanding drive by both of you. This is game on. Well done. Thanks, hey, looking forward to it. It is. And so we've got Jamie Winkup leading from Craig Lowndes, David Reynolds third. What about the performance of Mark Winterbottom, car five in fourth after starting from 15th? It's a great strategy play and a good effort from Stephen Richards and Jonathan Webb in car 19 is fifth. So race director Jim Schenken instructions to the Pitters STP safety car and the man in command of the field is Jamie Winkup and prior to the safety car intervention it was 5.2 seconds covering those top four Winkup lounge Reynolds and Winterbottom that you just made mention of. It's interesting that that's the, a primary driver scenario whereas back in position 10 is John McIntyre because remember they've had to go with a different strategy. They used Will Davison initially to try and bolt the car up and uh, Johnny Mack's 10th at the moment. He was about 25 seconds off the lead, but the good news is you get a birthday for free with the safety car, and that means that uh, that's around about a 10 second margin now as we're about to go racing once more. It's a good restart from both Vodafone guys and Dave Reynolds and Mark Winterbottom. So Winterbottom right up in contention now. That safety car has served him well in terms of bringing him forward. He was 3.85 seconds behind at the time of the safety car. Alongside now is Tanda down the inside of Webb. Webb does it all the time, this move over and a straight line stuff. We've really got to be careful. And he's outbraked himself at turn one around the outside of Tanda, and Tanda grabs the spot. Webb will lose four or five positions here. Got to rejoin very carefully because that's McIntyre. And I think I just caught the back end of a message for a car 30 for pit lane drive through penalty, and that'll be. Yeah, car 30, black, black flag, pit lane drive through penalty for the incident with Steve Owen. A bit concerned in the background, don't know whose voice it was, so you can't point the bone, but someone in the crew encouraging a driver to milk it and encourage the intervention of the safety car. Wasn't very sporting, whoever it was. Also a black flag for Johnny Reed, car 91, for that contact with Alex Premer up turn one. So the cream rises to the top. Starting from 19th, car number one now leads the race. Starting from 6th, car 888 is second. David Reynolds, car 55, started from the front row of the grid and he's third. And then Mark Winterbottom, car 5, started from 15th, is now fourth. Now watch Tander in all this. He's got a little bit of fresh air. He's not being corked up in this group and he's hunting Winterbottom. This is going to be a real straightforward fight for a while between all these guys. Look at that stuff. Yeah. That's scary. I mean, you've got to be able to drive in a straight line, you drive them in a straight line. So all that moving around, and we see young blokes do it in Formula Ford, and uh, whenever that happens, that's when the weirdest accidents occur because the wheels touch and uh, no one's really ready for it because, as I said, in a straight line, you should be able to drive it along without too much drama. A lot of damage now. Wow. That's coming into the pit. That's for the drive-through, and he's crashed into the fence, getting into pit lane. Just there for a, sec, Johnny. a lot of damage on the Johnny Reed, number 91, Techno Commodore. So that was in position 22, that car, and he was about to serve that drive through. Drive suited up. Drive suited up. Let's get a hang of the car inside, please. Have a look at this. So just right there, there's the car. And he got a little bump. He definitely got a little bump from another car, and that turned him into the fence. Uh, so he didn't actually get to the pit lane entry. So it's a they, VOC he, car, I think. Whoever he was battling didn't recognise that he was going into the lane and has served him. VOC car. Is that a VOC car? Yep, yeah, definitely. They make contact. 
turned him around, and that's very fast. So who's in that car number eight? Jason Bright at the moment. So Bright's in focus at the moment as they investigate that incident, no doubt. It's easy to do that by yourself because when you come out of the last corner and your brakes are coming around the little right and left, it's easy to crash on the way up that little ramp getting into pit lane, let alone without it, other cars assisting you into the ramp. So it will be interesting to watch the performance of John McIntyre here in car number six. There he is, a non-regular driver surrounded by the main gamers. Will did all the hard work. There's the nudge spot on the front of the Team BOC car for Jason Bright that gave Johnny Reed a push. And he's in position 17 with Andrew Jones again. This time five teams or five cars have maintained their pairings from last year. That's one of them as they head up to the mountain in three weeks' time. This is uh, John McIntyre again that we're looking at in the foreground in 22. Is James Courtney, he's 10th. Rick Kelly's in the Jack Daniels 15 entry at the moment. It's McIntyre in the trading post entry. This is a quite a little cluster of cars here. Curiously, it's just over four seconds covering the top five cars at the moment. So that's tantalizing the prospect of having Wink Cup, Lowndes, Reynolds, Winterbottom and Tander all in a big arm wrestle. And Rick Kelly did a really good job yesterday. He forged his way through the field, got to sixth. And in terms of race pace today, it doesn't look too bad either. The car looking after its tyres hasn't got the ultimate pace, but in terms of consistency, looks like it uh, is using the rear tyres well. He was one that could not believe what was going on yeah. yesterday in that main game sprint for the grid. And remember, he got um, hung out wide or hung on the inside, the dirty side, heading up to turn one. And I said, mate, we held our breath. He said, don't worry, so did I. <laughs> Hey boys, I've got Johnny Reed down here with me, with Michael Patrizzi. Johnny, from what we briefly saw on the TV, I'm guessing you're not going to be very happy with what we've just seen. I, I don't reckon your car's getting fixed, mate. Yeah, well, what can we do, really? It's um, it's just a shame, like it was a restart, still a long race to go, but um, I was just driving to the number, and next minute I uh, got turned around and into the pit, so into the pit wall, and um, it was a pretty hard hit, so, you know, the boys have got a bit of work to do. It's just a shame. As I said, it's a long race to go. It's just very disappointing. And, Michael, this is your racing effort that's really affected here. I could see you were agitated, mate. I heard you from the other end of the pit lane. Yeah, it's bullshit. You know, this is... I'm sorry, it's TV, but the guy that's turned him around is the biggest complainer in the paddock. He tells everyone that they're disgraced with their terrible drivers, and he goes and does this week in, week out. I think he needs to go for holiday, to be honest. It's crap. Absolute bullshit. Well, there you go. So... Angst is crystal clear at Techno Autosports. It just sounds to me, and I'll get Larko to check, that Johnny Reed wasn't coming in to pit lane. It didn't sound as though he was going to make his yeah, drive-through. Well, he had to do the drive-through, exactly. But yeah, the way he's explaining that, it doesn't sound yeah. like he was actually coming in. He's but explaining as though he was just tagged from behind and pushed into the wall. So we'll get uh, Larko to check that out if he was actually planning on entering pit lane at that stage. It would make more sense. But uh, Michael Patrizzi has blown up Deluxe. Yep. Yeah, Matty, Matty, you're dead right, mate. Actually, I just spoke to Johnny, and he said, yes, he was coming in okay. the pit lane, although he felt quite strongly that he wasn't in the lane or near the lane when it happened. Right. That's, that's right. So the contact was made probably 100 metres before the entry to the lane, and that's what uh, has turned Johnny Reed around with a difference in speed, trying to break it there, and Jason Bright not knowing. In the meantime, our championship leader leads the Sandown 500, Jamie Winkup, with a half a second advantage over his teammate.
number correct. And I There's our leaders, Wincup Lounge, Reynolds and Winterbottom. A little bit of a gap back to Garth Tander. Tim Slade, the lucky seven car. And then Shane Van Gisberg. And that car, of course, started on pole position with Luke Yulden. So that takes you down to position seven. Let's check out this replay up here at turn six. Wow. It's uh, Jonathan Webb just straight lining the gap between turn six and eight down there. Got away with that. I've seen that done quite a few times there. It's actually a reasonable little escape hatch in what's an awkward part of racetrack if you go off. I've seen you do it. <laughs> you picked me up down there once. <laughs> Guys, with Steve Johnson, Steve, the best late plans often go astray. <laughs> That's the case today. Yeah, mate, it was. It was the same as yesterday too. But, uh, you know, starting 11th, thought we had a good shot. And uh, obviously Alan plan. had a drive through for, a, for an infringement down there at turn nine. But, uh, I wasn't planned to go in the car until later, but uh, we had to get me in the car to make sure we stayed on the lead lap. You know, lucky enough we did. We saved a, a safety car later on, and we're, you know, we're back in the back of the train, but right up with the leaders. Yeah, pulled it back together, so the rest of the race looks all right now. Yeah, well, you know, we're going to leave Alan out now. We should only need to do one more stop, and, uh, you know, hopefully the car's got a bit more pace. We can, uh, you know, pass a bit like we did yesterday, and, uh, you know, get back up towards our top ten, but it's... It's been, been a long day so far. <laughs> we wish you luck. Of course, we're counting down to battle, so I've got to quickly have a word to your dad. Excuse me, Stevie. Uh, just a few weeks to go now until we're back at the mountain. And Dick, I know 50 years of Bathurst this year, a lot of excitement. You've been involved in a lot of the lead-up, but it, it really does mean something special to Australia, doesn't it? Well, it's certainly an event that gets the, uh, the imagination of every most uh, motor racing fans around the world because it is a very different racetrack and it's a very different event. You know, we'll ask everyone over the next few weeks their favourite Bathurst moment. Yours? Which one would you like, mate? I've got a few of them. So. <laughs> no, I've got plenty of them, but uh, I suppose, you know, when you have your first win there, it's always something special, uh, even though it was a bit of a shortened race at that point in time, mate, but um, it goes in the, in the record books. All the very best. Good to see you, mate. Looking forward to it, I tell you. Bring it on. Thanks. It's just 1.3 seconds, the gap between the race leader, Jamie Wincup, and fourth place, Mark Winterbottom. It's a ripping battle. It's going to come down as we look at car 17. Here's Alan Simonson in this car. We were just talking with Dick and in the Dick Johnson Jim Beam Racing bunker. It's going to come down to how efficient everybody plays their last stop and how hard they can run on the last load of fuel and the last set of tyres. Now, the interesting thing to contemplate, though, will be weather, as we've been suggesting all afternoon. It's lurking out there, but so far it's been a non-event. And the other component of that is if there is a safety car, how teams choose to play it, whether you queue up and take the pain or how you do it. We'll come back and discuss that again shortly.
and waiting on the field. The lane's clear. The lane's clear. Still 65 laps to go this afternoon in the Dick Smith Sandown 500. Jamie Wincup leads by 0.9 of a second over Lowndes, and then it's Reynolds in third. And we're looking at Dean Fiore in position 13. So we've got about, what, 20-odd laps until we start thinking about the next round of stops. Interestingly, just saw again the training post car there, John McIntyre at the helm. He's now reached the minimum requirement to tick off the co-driver minimum laps but they won't want to really yank him out of the car unless they get a safety car or there's some weather or something else happens because they want him to get to the next fuel window so that they can fuel it once and get it home that's right so it's almost like a double stiff for him in this part which is really going to hurt because you're effectively putting McIntyre against the lead drivers so all the gain that you saw Davison make at the start that was fantastic to come from last to first but you put McIntyre against the others in this very important middle phase of the race. We were going to have a chat with Mark Larkin then, but we'll come back to him uh, and he can add, but uh, he's down in 15th now, John McIntyre. And the reason we're making reference to him is we saw a championship contender, Will Davison, at the back of the grid at the start of the race as a result of what happened yesterday. Remember that he came in this weekend in position three in the championship but look at this. This is just a fantastic battle between four great athletes, or three effectively great teams, Team Vodafone, Botlow Racing and Ford Performance Racing, although the cars that are third and fourth are effectively from the same workshop. And just a heartbeat behind is uh, Tanda, Slade, Van Gisbergen. So they're by no means out of this as well. Larko, you good to go? Yeah, and just to add to that, you know, what's interesting, what Lowndes will be thinking long and hard about, he knows the double stacking thing happens, so if we get a safety car in the wrong period, that's going to hurt him. But Scafie spoke earlier on about Traction Limited coming onto these little straights, or the long straights, off the slower corners. And if you look at that slow-mo vision, you'll see very rarely in a race car around a corner is the tyre not actually spinning or sliding across the road. So here we have turn four down to the back straight, or turn 12, 13 onto the front straight. Now, there's a term we use in racing, WOT, wide open throttle. So it's a time you get to 100% throttle from there to there. At the back, it happens to be 850 metres and 700 metres down the front. Now, if you could just get to that throttle a little bit earlier and you could make that 853 or you could make that 705, that effectively means you make the straight a little longer and a little longer there. And as we get to the back end of the race where we know we'll get another safety car, the racing will be on. It's going to be so critical. So I'm going to wander down here to turn 13 and I want to show you the weird sort of line they take out here. Looks like they go the long way around, but it's all about getting that weight onto the inside tyre, getting around the traction problems and getting a longer wide open throttle. Thanks for that, Larko. And that's why we talk so much about corner exit speed and the way in which you get around the corner and you get that throttle advanced and the ability for the car to put its power down becomes very important. This place is hard on tyres. The tyre degradation at the rear is significant. 
you've got to manage all that in the back end of the race. Here's Mark Winterbottom. He's fourth. It's a recovery for these guys. Stephen Richards did the early stint. They were down the order after a topsy-turvy day yesterday in the sprint for the grid races. And just before the last ad break, you were contemplating, Neil, the problem with a safety car, which Larko just picked up on. And this Russell Engel, Rick Kelly battle is pretty lively. But if they get a safety car, then the drama becomes the second car for that team. And the team for, say, for instance, Wink Up and Lounge, you have to make a call. Yeah, do well, so that's what I was saying just before we go to the break. Do you queue a Craig up or do you send him round for a lap, in which case you often get burnt? And now if you go back, folks, to that mad scramble on cold tyres between Jamie Winkup and Craig Lowndes, that's the reason those two were fighting for sheep stations. They're experienced enough, they know enough of the game, that if you give track position to your opponent, even if he's dressed in the same colours, that far back, it can actually have an impact later in the race. This little battle here is a beauty, 11th and 12th, Ingle and Kelly, and they're absolutely at it. Well, when we just joined this battle too, Russell had just got past Rick, so Russell up to 11th. Ahead of him is James Courtney in 10th, so the Walkinshaw stable mate's about to get a little bit closer as we look at Carl Reinler's front right in action on the extreme slow-mo, the Fair Dinkum Sheds entry, and Carl's down in 21st position, so James Courtney in 10th, and remember, his uh, co-driver, Cam McConville, in his stint, had a pretty wild ride off the end of turn one. So after starting seven, James is holding fire inside the top ten. Guys, either that car, four, or the preceding car, nine, have got a broken header or something going on with the exhaust. You listen, it sounds terrible. I think it might be car four. We'll see if we can pick it up with the audio mic on one of our cameras. Let us listen. She sounds like an old Massey Ferguson <laughs> back paddock. <laughs> Lee Holdsworth and Craig Baird this weekend. And you will not like that, Matty. That sort of header issue will be 15 or 20 horsepower. You're standing on your ear. And uh, the place like this where it's so power sensitive, he's got his hands full for the rest of the day based on having that engine. Oh, look at the noise. <laughs> And it has implications also sometimes depending on where the factory is and where it's blowing the hot exhaust gas, which is at an extremely high temperature. It can impact all sorts of things, hydraulic lines or wiring looms or other things in and around the engine bay. So they'll be looking carefully at it inside the Irwin Tools bunker at Stone Brothers Racing, looking at data, watching temperatures, getting feedback from the driver. Lee Holdsworth's at the helm at the moment. Hey, Neil, if um, I'm, I'm just down here, turn 12, 13, I was talking about, mate, if one rolls over the fence behind me, just give me a yodel, will you? Yeah, uh, duck. Duck, But Marco. you can see what I'm talking about. As the cars come around, it's almost like they come the long way around. They don't go over here. They really come right out wide. It's not the shortest way, but it's the best way because as they come around the corner, by using all that curb, they can unwind the steering. And by doing that, it puts some of the load off the right-hand side rear tyre and shares it with the left-hand side rear tyre and allows them to get to 100% throttle, that wide-open throttle we talk about, preserves tyre life and gives them more straight-line speed way down here. What did we teach you when you first came to racetracks when you were a kid? Don't lean on the safety fence and don't have your back to the traffic. Get out of there. <laughs> get out of there. That was good. Thanks, mate. Scares me when he said he's back to the traffic. I'm serious. Tim Schenken sees you. He'll roar at you. Here we go. Jason Bright on Johnny McIntyre. So the Kiwi non-regular driver is well and truly under attack. And Fabian Coulthard is lining up to take another position off him. So this long, hard afternoon for the trading post car number six continues in a different fashion. This time for the co-driver. Back after this break.
laps remaining. Jamie Wincup's extended his lead. You can see there as they go up the front straight, it's now 1.8 seconds over Craig Lowndes. So Wincup skipping away a little bit. Lowndes has got Reynolds still stuck right behind him. He's not giving him any room. Mark Winterbottom there. There's Garth Tander. Then it's Tim Slade and Shane Van Gisberg and the two Stone Brothers racers having a pretty good battle. The three of them are there. It's uh... Slade, Van Gisberg and Holtzworth, and Holtzworth with that six sounding car is still hanging on in terms of lap speed. Yeah, Ross Stone, Lee Holdsworth car, the boys just saying not sounding fantastic. What's up? Oh, we think it's broken a heater. All temperatures, everything's all right. So, you know, and you just hope that the heater's broken in the right place. It doesn't put too much heat in the engine bay there. So, we push on for now? Yeah, absolutely. The speed's still good, so we just got to keep our head, on, head down and keep going. Ross, your drivers have a great way of finding each other in a big pack of cars. <laughs> Is that something? How do, you, how do you manage that? Oh, they know the deal. Um, they're free to race um, as long as they don't touch one another. Um, but at, at the moment, they've all got equal speed, so just see what happens here. I just thought you might have taken a gasp just looking at the screen then. Oh, no, that's right. We've been around doing this for a while, and uh, just, you know, that, that's the deal. That's how it works. Thanks, Ross. Good luck. Okay, mate. It's Harden racer Ross Stone. It's 8.3 seconds. Tim Slade's the lead car from the Stone Brothers gang. Lucky Seven Racing. 8.3 seconds from him to the leader of the race, Jamie Wincup. And then it's Shane Van Gisberg and SB Tools in behind. He's in the turbulent air right behind Slade. And then just a whisker further back again is Lee Holdsworth. Then it's Webb and Courtney. So that's the 10. Ingles just outside. This battle pack really... First half dozen cut, probably even throw the blanket over and include the top ten mark. It's very, very intense. It's a great motor race. These are these are the great races that when you're in the car and you're trying to find every last millimetre of car performance and every last hundredth in lap speed to try and throw a punch at the guy you're racing. They will be driving the cars crop, they like qualifying laps every lap. I think we're the guy at the moment who's got some potential to change the outcome is Van Gisberg and if he can get by Slade, Slade's been, the only, I think the only reason that Holdsworth can hang on is because the two Stone Brothers cars in front are actually having a bit of a battle and a couple of laps ago there we saw when Mark Werner was talking to Ross Stone we saw Van Gisberg and very close to Slade so he needs to find a way by, I think he's probably got better pace than what Garth Tander's got who's just up the road there and that is the equation between Wink Cup right through to Holdsworth as you said is a very tight battle. It's Luke Yulden on screen inside the garage at the Stone Brothers. And he's sharing car number nine today with Shane Van Gisbergen. And, uh, it's about seven or eight laps away when uh, the opportunity arises for the next round of critical stops for all of these guys. And that will fuel them and get tyres on the cars to get them home to the chequered flag at the end of the Dick Smith Sandown 500. 
2.2 seconds now, Win Cup to Lowndes. He's just eased it away ever so slightly. Last corner, mate. That's seven to go. Okay, thanks, Welcome back to the Dick Smith Sandown 500 as we edge closer and closer to the final crucial round of pit stops. Uh, Jamie Winkup's our race leader. We're zeroing in on Fabian Coulthard, the Lockwood entry in car 14, who's just got past Alex Prema and is actually. Now tucked in behind his BJR teammate of Jason Bright, who also got past car 33. Mark Winterbottom Ooh. up and wide. Oh, 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 that's close. That was close, wasn't it? It's interesting, we've talked about weather all weekend. It hasn't really happened, boys. We've got the uh, Bureau's radar in the commentary box here, and really there's sort of a line of, of uh, weather that extends through Beaufort up in Western Victoria down towards Geelong, but it's sitting on the ranges up there, and depending on where you are, you might be getting a drop of rain. But there's not much happening here, it's sunshine. It's Michael Caruso. Sixth gear back straight, 275 k's. And uh, he is 17th at the moment. And a day of what might have been, too. There's the radar that you're talking about. So that it really hasn't moved yeah. that far, has it? It's sort of just stuck in that line. Basically looked like that for the last hour or so. Okay. Started on the second row of the grid, these guys. We did a rock-solid job in qualifying. And then Greg Ritter, have got, of course, got, well, spun around and did it all on his own and had to watch the world go by. Just looking at tyre degradation numbers here between cars one and triple eight. Here we go, Jamie Wincup and Craig Lowndes. And it looks like the rear tyres have just hurt a little bit in this stint for Craig Lowndes. There is one lap difference in the age of the tyre. 
in favour of Jamie Winkham, but that's next to nothing, 3.1 k's around here. But uh, he's just looking vulnerable to David Reynolds at the moment, isn't he, Craig Lowndes? And, and Winterbottom is setting just in the right spot to grab them if anything goes wrong with these guys. And then Tanda's just a little further adrift. I thought there'd be more fireworks in this stint, but they're all maxed out. They're just basically in a queue. So it's going to make these pit stops critical. Have a look at the times. 11-7, 11-6, 11-7, 11-8. 11-8. now 12-2. So he's the first one into the 12. So the top four cars all in the late 11s. We're on board now with Dave Reynolds. Again, we're going to follow the back of Craig Lowndes. You watch how much curb that he uses everywhere. <laughs> turn two, turn three, this is turn four. I just told, Jeremy just told Craig that he'll be in in four or five laps, so just use and abuse these tyres, we won't need them again. David's just making a rear anti roll bar change there. A little bit of rev limiter out of breath at the end of the back shoot. see the difference in the way they achieve their speed. We often say this, the FPR cars are very good in the middle of the corner. The Triple Eight cars are very good at getting at the corner and off the corner. And the mid-corner speed, say at a 75k or 80k corner like that, might only be two or three kilometres an hour. But they just achieve it slightly differently, but at the end of the day, their total lap speed is very close. We see Dean Canto there looking on. Hey boys, sometimes I think we just should stop and take stock of the fantastic reliability in the category. You know, as we come to the end of the current V8 supercar era before we get into uh, Car of the Future next year and new manufacturers, I mean, we're three quarters away through a CNN 500. All the cars are running bar one, which is only stopped because of... Well, hang on. Just have what you say, Larko. It's Alan Simons and Larko. No, but in all seriousness, I mean, all cars bar one, which is accident damage, are out there running. I mean, it's a fantastic achievement, and I know for a fact, on a world standard, this is heading, held in very, very high regard. And when you stop to consider the load and the temperature and the extreme energy that goes through the cars, Marcus, you know, gearbox differential, drive shafts, axles, tail shaft, I mean, it's such a... Here's the replay of what happened here for Alan. So just got all crossed up and couldn't stop it down at turn nine and then two into gravel. And, uh, but your point's well made. Here's the other angle of Simonson going off down there. And what you've got to be careful of is when you come back out, you have a look at the amount of rocks and stuff that were coming out of that car and you can see all the debris there at the last two corners. Those rocks fire out from under the under tray and anywhere that they can fill any of the crevices the body of the car and then when you put your foot on the brake they all come out and they're everywhere and at that group you can see right there that Shane Van Gisbergen is the fastest you said it before Scafie you think that he's the one the back end of this top 10 that can start to do some damage to the leaders he's got to get round Tim Slade first Lee Holdsworth is just holding on for that crook sounding Erwin Tools entry he was in the 112s last time but he's uh, keeping his position so get set now for some stops, guys. Have a look at this. This is all this debris. And when you arrive as the next car, it's like being on a rally track. It's look at look at the amount of rocks and small stones from that kitty litter at Dandenong Road. As we see Todd Kelly now in for his final stop. And as you said, Crumpo, now this will be on. There'll be stops being made everywhere to get everybody home in the last segment of the race, to sprint home. I think that was uh, some engine oil that they were squirting into that with a little dry brake system there too. Not 100% sure, I'm not. Larko's there, he can tell us. trying to ask me something, I got the exhaust in me, he's like, didn't hear a word you yeah. said. <laughs> well, that's, well, that's good. It smelled great, though. <laughs> you get your kicks in weird ways, mate. <laughs> I asked you a question to see if there was a dry brake fitting on there to put some oil in that engine, but you weren't uh, paying attention to us. We thought you were just ignoring us. Two seconds the gap between Twin Cup and Lowndes. Here's the second of the Jack Daniels cars in, car number 15, 18th. We're struggling with a wheel here, we need a wheel for that. They make 
be an adjustment to it, are they? Yeah. Looked like a shock adjustment while, because fuel's the limiting. Uh, here we go, in. Reynolds in, this is important. Winter and Winterbottom runs with him. They're in different spots in the pit lane, remember. So they'll figure that they're in the fuel window. They're looking for a tyre undercut here. Mate, do not touch the brake pedal, okay? Hold the steering wheel straight. I'll let you know when oh, you can pump pads. it, okay? Just do don't do it. Should do pads earlier. We should be clear to go when we drop, okay? Should do pads earlier. It's always dangerous when you go to a stop like that. Well, if there's any delay here, you the your minim, minimum amount of time to make it back up. So fuel's still the limiting thing. It's still going in. The rate of 3.3 litres a second at the back of the car for the Supergen bioethanol. Oh, you set of pads in the front. Now they're clipped in. Uh, see, they've, that, that's actually slow. That's slow. So... That's hurt him. Let's put them out. It's going to help Mark Winterbottom. Put them out. Put them out and he's got traffic. You, you can't win races when you do that stuff. So not only puts him behind Mark Winterbottom, but also Lee Holdsworth. Well, here he is. He's done a really good job. He's in Canto all day. And you're in contention to win the race. You make a last minute call and it's... And he's now got John O'Webb down the inside of him as well, so he's got traffic to contend with here in his lounge. So that was massively costly. These guys did their pad stop, one stop back. Now this is brand new tyres, so you get green tyres, slick stop, minimise the amount of work. This is all about risk management at this time of the race. Johnny Mack in the background. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the Van Gisbergen car versus Slade. It's Will Davison getting back in to car six. That one's transported and they've come in together. So we'll just see there because they've actually, in the end, exited exactly at the same, same time. So Lowndes is away. So Frosty's made a gain here relative to Craig. Oh, big change here. They're doing rotors and pads. Well, they've been complaining all day about the brake pedal quality. So yeah. for sure, they're making big changes here to try to help that for them. Wind Cup and Tander are in the lane. There's Fabian Coulthard. And there's Tander in the background. And he'll get a kick along too from the David Reynolds drama. Oh, he will do. He'll, he'll get a spot out of that. This is fuel to the end. Yeah, we're done. So telling Will Davis in the meantime to pump up the brake pedal. So it's new front rotors and new pads. So he's come down the list. Let's see where Wing Cup arrives versus Lowndes. Lowndes is just coming around the final turn about now. He'll come into shot, there he is. Wing Cup leads them out. Lowndes and Winterbottom now behind them. Crucial stop and they've made ground on Craig Lowndes. Garth Tander has made ground as Neil said. Up in now behind Winterbottom. So Winterbottom, oh he locked the right hand front just on turn in. When we get your next shot, he ran very, very wide. Just stopped that then, didn't wow. he? So it's heavy. Still on tyres that are coming up to temp and pressure. Just got away with that one. So this is all filled up and ready to race to the end now. They can go the distance. James Courtney has just entered pit lane. I was just watching on with Tim Edwards, who took a good look and a close look at those FPR stops. Tim, the bottle I stop probably wasn't ideal. Yeah, no, it was, a, it was a very poor stop. I mean, unfortunately, when you have to mix pit stop crews, you've got to rely on another team. And they had an issue. And, uh, yeah, very disappointing. Will Davison's also maybe a little bit longer than you would have liked? Yeah, no, well, that was, that was the... Unfortunately, when John came in, he completely overshot the box. So when you've got rotors, pads, everything set up, it just, everything was out of position and they were knocking brakes over and, you know, you can't afford to, you know, these the guys, they have to stop right on the box. It's that important. And Will going lap down the problem? Yeah, I mean, 
it's, it's going to be a very hard day for him. You know. We've got to focus on car five now. That's our best shot at being on the podium and having a crack at winning the race. All right, thanks, Tim. Good luck. No well, out of all those hard luck stories, car five was oh. clearly the best and got a great advantage and he's now effectively... Oh, oh the... Whoa. Courtney. Big mistake. Webb. Webb's Remember, going to grab it. Remember, James has just come out of pit lane. Yeah. And, oh, he's going to hit him. He's running straight through the grass. And James Courtney could stop that then. What happens when the tyres are cold like that? You've got absolutely no grip. You turn the wheel, and he basically skated into the side of Jonathan Webb. James Fiore skates off the end there also. And there's more drama with Caruso and Fabian Coulthard. Yeah, all this sort of stuff, if you keep seeing this sort of caper, you'll end up with a safety car, and that'll condense the field again. It's not just a question of the messy stop, though, or the shared crew, I reckon, for car 55. It's doing pads that late, because if you, you know, we all know pad stops and brake rotor stops, if you do it, but run, there's much higher risk in that type of stop. You know, a pad can jam or someone gets burned or whatever the case may be. Doing it late, if you do burn a second or two or five, means that you've got less race left to recover from it. So I think it was very late in the day for that one. We'll see what happens in the closing stages of the Dick Smith 500. So as we head on the charge home here at the Dick Smith Sandown 500, let's run you through the highlights of the day so far. Luke Gilden started on pole position for car nine. Car 55 is on the front row next to him. Nick Perkat got a stunning start, as close as you'll get to a jump, but it was perfect. And this here was Alan Simonson into the back of Christian Clean, and that's what happened to Tony Dalberto's car early on. He was the victim after all of that. 
Paul Dumbrell did a stellar job in car one. Qualified in 19th spot, so he had the job ahead of him as Luke Yulden in the SP Tools car. Barely made a mistake in the opening stint, but then under pressure, really started to come under fire. Car three, Dale Wood turning around the Ritter Caruso entry. And Greg Ritter was another who did a great early job, but uh, it came unstuck as well. That's a good way to break an ankle in pit lane, isn't it? This is the team I select car getting hold of Steve Owen. So Taz Douglas punting Owen. Owen had just come into pit, uh, just come out of pit lane for his stint, pretty much. And uh, car 91 into the wall there on approach with a shove along from Jason Bright. So it's uh, been plenty of activity at the front of the field. This is the story. Jamie Wincup leads by 2.1 seconds over Craig Lowndes. Then it's Mark Winterbottom. Then we have Garth Tander in fourth spot. Fastest lap of the race, just done by David Reynolds. Ben Gisbergen and Tander rubbing paint up at turn one. So it's a fight for Garth to hold on to this spot here against a really angry pack. He's out of SBR. He's struggling at the moment, Tander. He's just been looking vulnerable in the last couple of laps. And this is a couple of laps earlier, and he had to straight line the run down the hill through the grass, and he's been losing a tenth or two every lap. Oh, he's off again. Is it the, oh, that's the other angle, I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, he's been really battling, just trying to hang on to this thing. And, uh, meantime, David Reynolds has done the best lap of the race, 110.9, just on the last lap. And uh, he just nipped the time away from Will Davison, who's down in 20th at the moment, who also did the quickest lap of the race. I believe Mike Henry's down at the Holton Racing Team with the Mickey Mouse ears on down there. G'day, Mike. Uh, a bit of nail biting going on there at the moment. Garth's a busy boy. He is, mate, isn't he? Yeah, it's uh, that time of the day, really, where it's all settling into the last stint. So I think he's just at the moment working on giving you blokes something to talk about. <laughs> he's doing a good job, Mike, <laughs> in, that, in that regard. What about... Uh, the effort of James Courtney. It was a, it was a pity that uh, Cam McConville got forced wide there at turn one in his stint because James looks pretty solid. Yeah, absolutely. It was. Uh, I mean, fortunately for us, that was early in the day, so we were able to work our way through it. Probably didn't cost us too much in the end, but uh, yeah, he's done a great. Well, both the guys done a great job in that car today. So nice to be pushed up and now really pushing on for a good result. Mike, did you change anything in the stop? Because it looks like with a full load of fuel on this tyre set, for some reason, Garth's just a little more vulnerable. Did you make a change and perhaps have gone the wrong way or not? Uh, we only just did a little bit of roll centre, mate, but I think it's early in the stint, so we're probably looking at the overall stint as where we need to be. So, uh, you know, maybe early here. Um, you know, in the last stint, he probably used the tyres up a bit earlier, so this is about getting the car better in the, the latter half of this stint. All right, mate, thank you very much. Both cars inside the top ten, and Russell Ingall sitting there in 12th, so we'll see how it unfolds for the next 35 laps. Thanks, guys. Mike Henry there, team manager. So what uh, the racing team? Mike's talking about there is when 30, 40 kilos of fuel come off it, they're pinning their hopes on the car balance, tidying up a little bit, but that's if he survives at the moment because he's got... Shane all over him. He basically put a pass on him last lap down here. This time Garth's a wake up and covers him to turn one. And what Garth has to do is race hard but race straight because if he starts to slide the car, it'll make his life worse. And he won't just get grabbed by one car if he gets his ears boxed and ends up hung out wide somewhere. Two or three cars will grab him. Now that gave him a little reprieve then because Shane just got it kicked a little sideways coming off turn four. He picked up the throttle a whisker early and it slid and that just gave him the relief that he needed to get away with at least one more corner in this battle. And at the back of that battle group you can see the green bottle -o entry of car 55 David Reynolds who was on track for his first ever V8 supercar podium right now is in eighth spot. Win Cup our leader.
So Gartander continues to be under attack from Shane Van Gisbergen who can't find a way to get round car number two. David Reynolds has gone up a spot courtesy of a mistake by Lee Holdsworth. So Reynolds now up to seventh. Russell Ingle and Rick Kelly getting a little bit wild. <laughs> Have a look how close this is, Matt. That's a little rub about to happen there. And they can ill afford much more damage on the back of that super cheap car. Look at the apron on the rear bumpers all torn off it. And this little bit of the fuel cell exposed down there. So the last time the Sandown 500 was held here, oh. last time it was the Sandown 500, as we look at the gears getting past Garth Tander, does he up at turn one? No, Tander fires it straight back down to two. And that battle's going to be repeated and repeated. Here's Alex Premer. Currently in 18th, he's got Carl Reinley behind him. Where do you reckon he's going at one? Head straight ahead. So the last time it was the Sandown 500 in 2007, Craig Lowndes and Jamie Wincup claimed victory. Remember last year's 500 at Phillip Island, it was a team Vodafone 1-2. With Lowndes and Mark Scaife winning, and Jamie Wincup and Andrew Thompson second. And at the moment, it's a team Vodafone 1-2 with Wincup and Paul Dumbrell leading, and Lowndes and Luff second. There's third place, Mark Winterbottom and Stephen Richards. And both 3.1 seconds off the lead of the race. It doesn't look like they've got just enough speed at the moment. The gap first to second has tightened ever so slightly. It's down to 1.3 seconds between the two Vodafone cars there. Tand is still hanging on in this battle, but he's proving to be a bit of a cork bed for this group because it's Tander Van Gisberg and Slade Reynolds a little mistake from Lee Holdsworth. Have a look at the lap times. All the cars to seventh are within one tenth from 11.3 to 11.2. They're all doing the same speed. These guys are driving the wheels off these cars right at the end of this race. Tander is the one who probably looks the most vulnerable in terms of position with Van Gisbergen. And your point's right there, Neil. Lowndes has just snuck up, but even again on this next lap, slightly better again. He's a tenth closer, once again, 1.2 seconds. But even in this mid-sector, he's taken another tenth out of Jamie. So we'll just freeze the view here and have a look and see there's third winter bottom, and then it's quite a bit of fresh air to Garth Hanner, and he, he's working for his dollar this afternoon. Van Gisbergen, Slade, Reynolds. Then it's a little bit of a gap Behind Reynolds is Holdsworth, then it's Webb next in the queue, so the Pepsi Max car is out of sequence. Courtney, there, then it's mate. Russell Ingle in 11th. He's still in that battle with Rick Kelly. You saw that super slow-mo replay before. Then big fresh air back to Jason Bright. He's 13th. 14th is his teammate Fabian Coulthard, Lockwood entry. 
Uh, then it's Michael Caruso, 15. Dean Fiore, 16. And more fresh air. And you'll see Todd Kelly eventually uh, trundle along here in the Jack Daniels car. There's quite a big gap back to Todd. And provisionally in terms of the championship, like the Jamie Wincup's extended his lead over Mark Winterbottom. But importantly, Craig Lowndes has now come up into third as Will Davison is stuck down there in 20th position. So that's a change for championship position heading up to Bathurst. Now there's Will Davis and we wanted to see him. He's 20th and he is one minute and six seconds off the lead and he's barely yeah. out of the grasp of these guys. Remember he just snuck out before going a lap down. That's how close he is and of course if he gets a safety car he gets back on the end of a compressed train. That would be a, a big present but right at the moment he can't afford any slips because uh, he's only six odd seconds, five odd seconds up the road from being lapped. And while Will's out there doing the hard work, his teammate uh, John McIntyre is here in the Ford Performance Racing Recovery Centre. Just come on in and have a look. John's on the massage table. Glenn's doing the hard work at the moment. Uh, everything OK, John? Yeah, don't look too close. But no, look, when, uh, when you've been sitting in the same spot for 70 laps, uh, you get the odd sore part. So Glenn's got a very gentle pair of hands and uh, he's just going to limber me up there a little bit. You look like the blood's flowing again. Good news. Steve, uh, you're on the, you've been on the massage table. Just getting some food into you now. But um, you guys are going well. Frosty's in P3. Yeah, so far so good. We sure had a, um, a good fire. recovery from Make yesterday. Sure and um, while Frosty's out there grinding around, I'm on the chocolate cupcake, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? Tough life. Tough. Uh, have you had a word to him just about keeping everything in order and pushing home? Oh, look, there's no, there's no need. He, he knows what it's all about. We had to make a little change to the car during the stop to make it handle a bit better for him. Um, but he's out there pressing on now, doing a good job. All right, all the best, mate. You just kick back and enjoy it. Thanks, mate. He's actually 2.6 seconds behind now as Stevie Calories up. So 2.6 this man to the leader, Jamie Wincup, and that margin first to second is down to one second. So there's a bit of elasticity in all this at the moment. Yeah. Lowndes is just getting a bit closer. Not 100% sure what's going on there. I'm looking at the sector splits, but could be a little bit of Wincup just trying to minimise too much tyre stress through the car as well. So just trying to stroll along a little bit. Well, there's not much strolling going on. 111.5 for Wincup, 111.5 for Lowndes. 111.2 for Winterbottom, 111.3 for Tanner. He's been locked on that speed in recent laps. 11.5 Van Gisbergen, 11.4 Tim Slade, 11.3 David Reynolds, 11.4 Holdsworth, 11.4 Webb. <laughs> but you've got to get to 10th, uh, James Courtney, before it's north of 1 minute 11.6. Hey guys, you spoke a lot about how costly that bottle low stop was in terms of doing your pad stop late. So let's just try and simplify it quickly for you. If this is a disc brake on a typical V8 supercar, you've got your caliper and you've got your pads in here, they're the red ones, and here's your pistons pushing in. So you push on your brake pedal, fluid comes in under pressure, pushes the pistons against the pads. Now that's all very good. Here's a brake pad, they started about 28 mil thick. What you want to do, as the boys were saying, is get that out early, not late, because if you let them wear down like that type of pad in a race and change them late, what happens, they get thin here. So this piston actually ends up way in here on both sides. The pad's now really thin, and when they put these pliers in then, they've got so much further to get the pistons back out to fit a nice, fresh pad to pad back into the car. Now, that's equally important as we approach Bathurst as it is at Sandown today. Exactly right, Like And the other thing, that you showed that pad there, there's a lot of what we call tapering. So the hottest side of the pad will taper or wear more than the other end of the pad. And as you said, when the piston comes out further on one end, it's very hard with the mechanics to actually pull the pistons back evenly and get the new pad in. So you've got to minimise the risk, and that's what long distance racing is all about, risk management. Heading towards the final 20 laps of the Dick Smith Sandown 500.
So we're heading towards the chequered flag of the first enduro of the 2012 season. And Jamie Wincup has got Craig Lowndes on a charge. The gap is half a second. Mark Winterbottom is third. And these two guys at the front of the field in particular have extraordinary form running through both the 500 and Sandown. Jamie has been on the podium in six of the last seven 500s. Craig Lowndes is a seven-time V8 Supercar 500 winner. Four of those here. Interesting when you hear Dutto, Mark Dutton, the engineer for Jamie Wincup, say there's 23 to go. Remember yesterday's sprint for the grids were 20 laps, so we've still got a lot of racing to get through here, and Wincup is just beginning to look just a little vulnerable at the moment. Both drivers, Lowndes and Wincup, are exploiting every last little bit of millimetre of racetrack. They're using more curve, they're using more exit space. That means that they're trying to take load. Take load out of the tyres, and when you soften the rear anti roll bar, as the instruction was then, you're looking for a bit more drive in the car to protect the rear tyres. And I think that's right, that happens on the exit of the corner, but on the way to the corner, if you watch his steering, and we'll get a shot of Wink Cup steering on board. When he turns into Dandenong Road in the last 90 degree corner, when he turns the wheel, Neil, he's got to turn it away from the corner. So as soon as he's Rotate. turned it, exactly. So you've got to take some turn out of it. And he's through, Lounge is by. So a little mistake there. A little mistake there with Wink Cup. And Lounge sneaks by. Big move this. In the precursor to Bathurst. Well, that's been coming, hasn't it? Just in the last couple of laps, Lowndes has looked seriously racy. And this got shot, him. this is where I said when he turns the wheel, it's got too much turn. He's wanted to take some rear bar out of it, to take some stiffness out of the back. And look what's happened with Winterbottom at the same time. And that's because the rear tyres will also be going away for Jamie. So right. the balance has changed as the fuel loads come off at about two kilos a lap and the rear tyres have degraded. It's ended up being two pointy. It's Jeremy Moore, engineer for Craig Lowndes. He was in Mark Scaife ears last year with Craig Lowndes. Now, Winterbottom's got a little free kick out of this as well, so he's in this battle. He's one second officially off the lead of the race. Now, the thing is, how much tyre did Lowndes use to do this? Because there is still 20 laps to go. That's right. So that's the mistake. That's a turn two to turn three. Lowndes around the outside and turns it in front of him. Very lucky not to get hit and rotate Lowndes. So this is the, this is the spot. Little wheel lock, saw the blue smoke. Down through there. 
And we've seen so many cars across the grass, but a very bold move from Lowndes to sneak around the outside, turn across in front, and command track position at turn four. So that's the little wheel lock. That's what did it. He goes off. Now watch the proximity of the two cars. This is from Winterbottom, straight across the top, and gets that move done. Very, very good driving from both guys. Really unusual to see two days running Jamie Wincup make an error. Jeremy Moore, engineer for Lowndes. This is on board with Jamie Wincup. You don't see this guy make these sorts of mistakes too often. It tells you something about how hard they're trying. 100%. I was just about to say, we, we called it earlier and we said these guys are doing qualifying laps. The only reason you go off when you've got the fastest, best drivers in the land, all battling to win one of the biggest races in the country, the only reason you go off is the pressure and the speed. So just the slightest little wheel lock into turn two. Fired him slightly wide. He couldn't make the little chicane of turn two and turn three. And that's cost him the lead. Now, Lowndes was coming at him. But what Neil said before is stay tuned because you just don't know how hard Lowndes used those tyres to get this track position now. And the first thing that Jeremy Moore said to him after getting that position one spot was let's look after the rears. I think it's important just to quickly show you when the boys are talking about Lounge adjusting his rear bar. We talk about a lot, very critical. We talk about traction. Well, here's a typical V8 supercar rear bar. It's actually an anti-roll bar. So there's what we call the bar. But these are the blades. This is what he's adjusting. There's a cable adjusted here. Goes up into his cockpit and he can adjust it up there. And what it does, it turns this blade like this. Now, if you can imagine, this is attached to the suspension on the car and the body of the car. So in roll, what it does when you turn that sideways, it allows it, like a butter knife if you like, to flex more. So full hard, full soft. At the moment, he's probably somewhere in between. Just gives a little bit of movement, a little more compliance. As the race goes on, the tyres get used more and need more. He'll soften Red that off more man, and more and more. Well done, Larko. That's exactly right. And that, that's the big help on the way out of the corner. It also softens the car on the way to the corner. And that's what Winkup was doing earlier when he started to use the rear tyre up. So Winterbottom's now got a sniff, having a look at the rear of Wing Cup, car number one, but Craig Lowndes leads the way. Can he hold on and defend his 500 from last year?
The weather situation has been threatening, threatening, but failing to strike a blow here at Sandown. And with 16 laps remaining, it'll probably just hang away for us. Intense anticipation at Ford Performance Racing with Mark Winterbottom in third. And likewise for Team Vodafone, Adrian Burgess perched in the middle of Mark Dutton on the left. The engineer for Jamie Winkup and Jeremy Moore on the right in charge of car 888, which leads the race. So he's driving with Frosty, he's trying to split these guys, he's trying to stop this domination, dominating run of Team Vodafone continuing. They've won the last eight races in the V8 Supercar Championship of 2012. Remember that uh, Lowndes came into the day 147 down in the championship, Frosty 44 down on Jamie Wincup. So there's pride at stake for this race, but there's also a championship. Race 20 of 29. And uh, if he sneaks by here, 32 points is the yield, so it's worth yeah. a lunge. It certainly is. And that's always the risk management game you've got to play. You can see that he's actually got real car speed on him now. He's right up in behind Wink Cup. And in terms of the way the championship's going to unfold, a 30-point pass means a lot at the end. Yeah, I should clarify that, that, that reduces it to 32 rather than actually grabbing it. So nice, smooth technique off the end of the back straight. Got to flow the car nicely into this slow 90 degree dead and on road. Left hander, we've seen a lot of drama there over the weekend. In these final two corners, the cars are very hungry. Have a look at the right hand curb. They run basically two thirds of the car across that right hand curb and then back to the traditional left-hander onto the straight. You see Tim Edwards there and Steve Richards looking on intently. So 200 points for a win in today's race, 184 for second, 172 points for third place. So some points allocated yesterday. So Tan has hung on. He has so what Mike Henry said to us a little earlier looks to have been the case that as the fuel burned off that car, he might be in a better position to fight a little later, but he had to fight tooth and nail to hold his track position. As I said earlier, if they grabbed him, three or four of them would have gone barreling by. Look how close Mark Winterbottom is to Jamie Wincup now. He's well and truly getting the benefit of the draft. So the two... Went back to fourth then. He did, yeah. And then I've said through the weekend, I'm surprised that more guys don't do it. When you go back to fourth, you use more engine braking and it makes the front of the car turn at the corner uh, more accurately because the engine's working harder and you get more for your money when you put your foot back on the throttle down the hill towards Dandenong Road. And when he flicked two gears, Neil picked it up straight away, it made it get into the inside, made it get to the apex very nicely. And you can see that level of intent. When you are trying that hard, that's the sort of stuff that you've got to do to make some ground on a guy like Jamie Whitcup. See Lowndes looking for some free air there in behind Tony Delberto. So he went over, chased him, got a little draft, ducked back out again. He's trying to find everything that gives him an extra millimetre of margin. I nipped outside in the break, a bit of a scan of the sky. And, but boy, when you're out there and listening to the Lee Holdsworth car, <laughs> that is a wild sound. Be wild inside the car for the whole afternoon. Good crowd here for this event too. 57,000 plus for the Sandown 500. It's got to run. It won't be too long away if you can get onto the back straight. You can see that speed there. It's got nice flow. He's going to have a little dive. Oh, that's close. That worries me because the problem with turn nine is that the driver, in this case Jamie, has to commit the turn in from very early to fly the inside of the car across the curb. So. 
if he hesitates, he'll understeer on the dirty line wide and end up in the gravel. So to get down the inside at turn nine is near impossible unless the guy in front of you makes a big mistake early enough. Otherwise, they converge to the one spot in the road, and we've seen that countless times. This is a great battle. Just look at the level of curve they're using here at one. So that's a little bit over it for both of them. Lowndes is a bit more hungry than that. This one here you can't use as much of. You get, although you hit the right, you can't use the left because the tyre bundle. And this is the spot. He's got to be able to get out of here. They straddle that exit curve totally and run right up to the end of the wall. And both guys didn't get it out of second gear very nicely. Then they both hung in second gear with the wheel spin and couldn't get it into third cleanly. Got to run. It's 275k on the limiter. Back to four. Hear that there? All the engine braking. And then bang, bang. Only two gear changes then. That actually limits the risk at Dannon on road. Nice run for both guys. Up on the exit curb. You use that motor, motocross style berm exit curb to contain the slide and keep the car on the track. David Ward is the car here. Wilson Security, the black Commodore in between. And it is great driving. Lots of guys putting on a beautiful display this afternoon. Tell you what, also, David Reynolds has recovered some ground here. He's got between Van Gisbergen and Slade in his recovery. Remember, he lost time in that stop with the late brake pad change. Is that much curve they're using there? That's unusual, isn't it? For, because normally you can't uh, hit the inside curve at turn one. It upsets it too much. Well, your description earlier of qualifying laps is right. Because in qualifying, you, you do that sort of stuff. You throw it at everything. You tend not to do it in 500k race, but at the moment, they have they to. Are. hoping that this lap car this gets in his way but he's not he's done a good job he's moved that out of the way nicely we'll let both of those lead guys by but we come a bit wide wasn't he this is all good news for Lowndes too yeah he was very wide he struggled to get it to point there yeah, Frosty would be looking for a crisscross in the last corner combination or to come off the last corner quick to get down the inside at one but he doesn't have much in hand in terms of lap speed compared to Win Cup, so it is not going to be easy. He'll, he'll be relying on something of a mistake. Quick look back to Davey Reynolds. He's looking at the back of Shane Van Gisbergen's car and he's in front of Tim Sway. That makes him sixth. That's been a handy recovery. So he's had to get by Holdsworth and Slade to do that. And there's the Giz. James Small on the radio and just in front of them is Garth Tander. Back to the lead pack though. Lowndes, 1.4 second margin. Wind Cup sweating and Winterbottom right here filling our screen. Too much curve on the inside at four. Kicks the car, delays getting the throttle in corner. Exit speed down a slight tad. Anything that upsets the car on the inside bounces the car wide and slows the rate that you can put your foot on the throttle. Mark Larkham said wide open throttle was the terminology used. And if that just contains that by three or four metres, it slows you down on the exit and your ultimate speed at the end of that straight will be affected by that. So what they've got to do, they've got to be super accurate. Although you're driving the car so hard, watch this. They use that massive curve on the right, but then they can't use this curve. They'll be right against it, then you use all that concrete apron onto the straight and take all the load off the steering run it right out wide where Larko stood before pull all these gears and now watch down here you'll see a really good shot of Lowndes technique he used he turns it in wide like Brock used to there Wink Cup tends to break it and move in watch Tanda Tanda's got a very straight break and then quite a hard turn same sort of thing there for Van Gisbergen slightly earlier turn in technique there for Dave Reynolds and this is this really interesting little chicane piece that leads you then into very important corner probably the most important corner on the track turn four because it's this big run up this roller coaster of a back straight We've seen some of the greatest moments in Australian motorsport off the end of here it used to be called a big fast it was Marlborough country in the old days and that was the domain of Brock and Moffat into this Danion on road historic corner Oh, that was a slow exit. It was, was it? Jamie, he used a lot of kerb on the inside. He had a lot of wheel spin on the exit. Now that's given Frosty a little incentive here. He's right under the rear bumper. Picks the throttle up gently and early. Runs wide as Mark Larkham described earlier. In the draft.
Here comes the change for sixth. Now he's sizing up the brake reference. Hot air going into the radiator. Hot air going into the front brake ducts. Uses a lot of inside curve at one. The speed on the inside of one is 115 kilometres an hour in third gear. These corners are slow. This one here is just 75 kilometres an hour at its slowest point. And then gently advancing the throttle, not exciting the rear wheels too much with well in excess of 600 horsepower and gently coaxing those Dunlops off the corner. A bit of traffic to contend with here. Car number 33 is the Frenchman, Alex Premer. Top seven drivers still circulating in the one minute 11 lap times. They're putting down qualifying style laps after 154, after more than three hours and 10 minutes of racing. It's an extraordinary level. I just want to have a quick chat to uh, Mark Dutton, but I can just say he's He just wants to let, he just told me, just wants to let Jamie know that there's lap traffic. This is the sort of chat they have. Thanks, Dutton. I appreciate that, mate. Um, obviously, we're watching with great interest. Jamie seems to be just hanging on. He's going to have enough left to uh, keep Winterbottom at bay to the end. Yeah, I think so. Uh, when uh, when J-Dub jumped in, we, we made an adjustment to the car for the track gripping up compared to the car that PD had. And uh, looking at the difference in uh, the speed that PD had over the rest of the field compared to J-Dub, um, I'd put it down to probably the adjustment could have been in the wrong direction. Yep. OK, so you should be good, mate. OK, now another guy I want to just quickly grab around here is Jeremy Moore, who is Craig Lander's engineer. Jerry, sorry to interrupt at this late stage, mate, but I just wanted to ask you, we're talking and hearing a lot about roll bar adjustments and Craig managing way, his way to the end of the race. You're his engineer, you know him better than anyone. What's he like to work with at this stage of a race in terms of managing those tyres at the end? He's pretty good. Like You hardly even have to tell him uh, when to adjust the bars. A lot of times I go to tell him and he's already done it. So uh, sometimes he gets, so you just got to keep on him. But um, no, he's, he's pretty good at doing it himself. So he's a champion. Very Mark close. Up. Very, very close down at turn nine then. Now Winterbottom is well incentivised. There's traffic. It's Premier. He's in the Fujitsu car. And this is the opportunity now for Winterbottom to try and pounce. He merely made a move. And the race director's called for a blue flag here for car 33. To move him out of the way, he does. This is a mega moment for Mark Winterbottom to get the job done. Very, very close to the back now of the championship leader. It means a lot. Moves positions on the podium and importantly for Winterbottom, it would get him a big fistful of points and he knows it. He qualified down the order in 15th. They've clawed their way back. That was a better run. That was a much better run for Winterbottom because he got out of there clean. He's in the toe. Now Winkup will stay left. He won't be able to move back over to the right-hand side of the road because this will be the time where Winterbottom will pounce. Wow, that was close at the top of the hill. He looks pacey, doesn't he, now? Frosty can place his car a little more accurately than Jamie at the moment. You notice he was able to put it where he wanted to over the top of the hill at six. It's a great exchange between these two. 1.9 seconds for Lowndes is the cushion. So he skipped away while these guys are in an arm wrestle. So just that exit drive, the straight exit drive that Mark Larkin was talking about before is very good on the Vodafone car. But the mid-corner speed, the flow, is very good for Winterbottom. Have a look here, turn one. You see the braking is good. He uses the brake pressure still on the kerb, middle of the corner speed, good. And then that last little bit of the corner is where Wing Cup sneaks away. See how hungry they can be across it. Turn two and turn three. Now this is the spot. You can't bump the kerb on the left and you've got to get out of here nicely. Very nice gear change that time. Got out of there a little bit further with less wheel spin. Anytime you excite the tire there and burst the car into wheel spin, it's hard to get your hands off the steering wheel catch the slide and make the gear change. That's Campbell, Campbell Little. It's his voice in the background talking to Mark Winterbottom and Stephen Richards with the headset on listening to all the radio comms. This is turn nine. That was the tyre bundle that's been moved around a bit during the day. Incidentally, Tanders just opened that cushion slightly to Van Gisbergen by 2.2 seconds now to ease a bit of the pressure as that fuel load came down. We're going to get away with the weather, boys. I believe it's wet over at Avalon Airport on the other side of Port Phillip Bay at the moment, but it's dry here and has been all afternoon. The gap, let's check it, 1.8 seconds, Lowndes to Wind Cup. And Wind Cup's just skipped away slightly on that lap. But there's absolutely nothing in it between these two.
This was the little position that Winkup made the mistake to let Lowndes through. Slightest little wheel lock. Put him off. That's the spot yesterday that he went off the road and hit the tyres. So he's made a couple of blues through the course of this weekend. Probably hasn't been his best performance. These guys have done a very, very good job. They were the standouts with Dean Canto of the co-drivers. Warren Luff is sitting there watching Craig Lowndes about to deliver Warren's first ever V8 supercar race win with four laps to go. Very impressive drives from these guys to run as hard as they had through two loads of fuel, two sets of tyres, and to be ringing the necks of these cars to this extent, lap after lap after lap, is one of the best displays of driving and, and the way the teams have presented their cars that are fast and consistent, reliable, as Mark Larkin pointed out early, this is very, very impressive. So we're on 159 out of 161. In three weeks' time, we'll be doing the same number around Mount Panorama. But twice the distance. Oh, got it. That's better. That's better. Still the exit not quite as good as the Vodafone Commodore. So what's interesting is the, the FPR cars very strong over the kerbs and traditionally that's been the domain of the Vodafone boys. They've been very good in that area. But it looks as though to me around this track at least this weekend the boys in Ford performance racing are at least equal to or better than. Look how <laughs> close. This is a go. This is a go. This is a chance. And oh. down there they've hit. They run into each other. He's pushed Wink up off. And down the inside goes Winterbottom. That was a very bold move, and you just saw Tim Edwards say, what do you reckon, guys? Is he up there far enough, or should he give the spot back? We'll show you that again. That was a very, very aggressive move. Here we go, so down there, just see what they hit. Well, that's right at the B-pillar. That's right at the point we've always determined where the peripheral vision for the driver is. The pace was here. He did a really good job across the top of the hill. He made ground down into Dandenong Road and he dived. And then all of a sudden, contact, wink up off, and off the road he goes. Now there's not much in that. I can't see there being any action over it. But you can see the move was done, and that's the reaction after the contact with the FPR guys. Watch Tim Edwards, what do you reckon? So he says, what do you reckon? Press on. Press on. Press on. So they've made a call, and that's uh, you've got to do that in this business. You've got to make a call and decide whether that's fair or not. And from a racist perspective, I reckon that's really line ball, but I think he'll get away with it. Yeah, I think he will, but it's, it's so hard to call that one because he got up there. But it, uh, it's the contact, I don't know, it's going to be a hard one. It'll get, to, get discussed afterwards. The way things have run this year, there's been general leniency. So that's what makes me think it'll be OK. Whew, what a battle. Huh? The <laughs> well, two series well, leaders. And it was brewing, yeah. Scafie. It was yeah. just brewing and brewing. And when you saw Frosty arrive out of turn six and through seven with excess pace, you knew that something was going to happen down there at nine. And I think the problem for him, he wouldn't have wanted to do it there. That'd be one of the least preferred places where, where you're going to be able to put a move. But if, if you feel as though the opportunity's coming, you're basically compelled to throw it down there and see what you can get away with. If you do it at one, you're more likely to get a clean move. Maybe at the end of the back straight, there's a wiper on uh, Lowndes' car there at the moment. Maybe he's just given the screen a bit of a clean. Two seconds is the gap, Lowndes to Winterbottom. Three hours and 18 minutes worth of racing. So we're on target for a new race record in the Sandown 500. Smiles for Warren Luff. This will be his first ever career victory after 112 races. He did a super job for Craig Lowndes and Team Vodafone. They started from sixth. When you won it with Lowndes last year at Phillip Island, Scafie, you also started from sixth position. It will be Lowndes' 100th career podium, his eighth 500 victory. This time of the year is Lowndes' time. Enduro time. Lowndes and Luff win it. Mark Winterbottom and Stephen Richards on the podium in second. Adrian Burgess gives Warren Luff an almighty hug. And a good cut. Dumbrell three. Garth Tander and Nick Perkat in fourth. Shane Van Gisbergen and Luke Yildon, the pole sitters, fifth. Thank you very much. 
And Davey Reynolds with Dean Canto starting from the front row of the grid, finishing sixth. It was a little mistake from our championship leader up at turn two. And Lowndes was there to pounce. Mark Dutton, Roland Dane in that picture as well. <laughs> he's a smiley character. He's, he's a popular fellow around the paddock, Warren Luff. But he did the job that was asked of any co-driver. Push on in your sector, in your session. Bring the car home straight. And Lowndes did the rest. And there's Will Davison. So from 27th up to 17th. Could have been more. And Lowndes is going to celebrate. What a high quality race that was. They were qualifying laps, lap after lap, for two complete segments of this event. And the two series leaders end up making contact with a lap to go for second and third position. This man in Enduro Land is the master. He's just, he just steps up, Matt. He's just got his eyes on. He's 100% committed to this part of the year. So race 20 out of 29 for the season. The provisional results have been through our podium. So Tander and Perkett, Garth Tander was fighting all the way to the finish there. And that's a, a good solid effort as they go up to defend their title at Mount Panorama. And as we go through this, we can take a look at those co-drivers on the right-hand side. You've got to give five stars to guys like Dean Canto. David Russell there with Rick Kelly. Greg Ritter made a mistake. It could have been so much more for car 34. Johnny McIntyre had the toughest job of the day. He had to do... The, uh, the, the session right in the middle against all the regular drivers, so it was a tough one for him. Alan Simonson and Stephen Johnson involved in way too many collisions. And at the rear of the field, Michael Patrizzi and Johnny Reid after that big push into the wall for car 91 as Johnny Reid was uh, getting ready to come through and serve a pit lane penalty. But car 888 will come up and pull up at position number one. It's the 87th time that Craig Lowndes has won uh, an Australian Touring Car Championship or V8 Supercar Race. Awesome drive, buddy. Hey, thank you. And as I said, 100 career podiums, that equals the great Peter Brock. Zero. Oh, man. How does he do it? Well, Lowndes, he... Plenty to celebrate. Warren Luff, congratulations, boys. That's fantastic. Uh, Lounsey, for you, your 100th career V8 Supercar podium. Well done. Oh, thanks, Bruce. I think it's uh, look at the credit for the whole team, everyone in Team Vodafone. We've had uh, pretty much an up-and-down weekend, but uh, you know, for Luffy to get in the car for the first time for us as pairs, uh, it's been sensational, really, to, uh, to watch him come through the start there. We were a little bit, I've got to be honest, we didn't give him any good tyres, so he did a fantastic <laughs> job. Well, Luffy, well done. Great to get your first win too. Uh, it is. Look, it's an absolute dream come true. And uh, look, to partner with this guy is just uh, unbelievable. And uh, full credit to everyone at Team Vodafone for giving us such a great car. It's, uh, it's been a great weekend and uh, let's roll on Bathurst. Uh, speaking of which, there is another event in about three weeks' time, Lounsey. How are you feeling about Bathurst? Oh, I think we're pretty, uh, you know, comfortable now. Look, as I said, it was an up-and-down weekend for the team. And uh, we, uh, look, we got through it all. And uh, look, it's a bit of a shame for Jamie and, and uh, PD. Like, they had a strong car. I'm not sure what happened at the end of it. But it's obviously a great job for FPR as well. It's, uh, you know, it's definitely a tough race out there. Enjoy this one, guys. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> we will. Great result. And we head around to Mark Widderbottom and uh, Stephen Richards, who managed to get themselves up into second spot. Frosty, that was interesting in that last couple of laps, just getting past Jamie. Yeah, well, you're, uh, you're racing hard out there. And um, I had one, uh, one good corner, and that was into Dandenong Road. And uh, he was always going to defend. I was always going to dive down the inside. And, yeah, we had contact. But... Um, that's probably one from a few years ago, but uh, no, it was a good race. We, um, Richo did an outstanding job, and we, uh, we got back on the podium from, uh, from 16th, so it was a great job. Steve, the chemistry between you two is obviously back there and as strong as ever, and, and just makes the whole job easy. Oh, yeah, look, the, I mean, the whole team, FBR are a great bunch of people, and um, really good to do this, get, get back on the podium from a tough weekend, and Frosty drove an awesome race. Frosty, who would have thought this time yesterday if we offered you a podium finish, I reckon you would have taken it from where you were? Oh, yeah, it was, uh, yesterday was a bad day, but these endurance races are, uh, are very, very tough and yeah, they're a long day, you know, so much goes on and uh, we thought we could come back through, but it was good to fight for a, for a position at the end on the podium and, yeah, we, we've turned it around, so it was a good day. And now to the mountain? Now to the mountain, we'll go again and... Who knows, it's, uh, it's going to be a tough race, but um, we feel good, so we'll see where we go. Congratulations, guys. Well done. Thank you. Thanks. And over to Jamie Wincup. Boy, Jamie, that went right down to the wire. Frosty just pipping in the last couple of laps. That was, that was tight. 
Hey, I uh, couldn't be happier with PD's job. He um, started, I gave him a car in 19th and he, uh, he brought it uh, back to me in the lead. So he uh, did a phenomenal job. Um, we weren't quite quick enough to, uh, to win today. We are certainly good for second. Um, yeah, a little bit sour about the, the, the pass down at Danong Road. I didn't think it was on. But um, hey, that's the way it goes. We couldn't win, so that's, a mate. that's, that's the only thing that counts. But um, we'll see what the man upstairs says. All right, do you accept the pass or not? No, I don't accept the pass. No, no, I thought it was... Uh, I didn't think it was was on, so um, we'll, we'll, no drama. We'll see what we'll see what happens. All right, we'll see. PD, great result too. Nice to get on this podium. Yeah, no, it is. It's uh, obviously from where we uh, started uh, today. It was obviously a good result. Um, you know, we we sort of uh, lacked that little bit of speed all uh, all throughout the day. So yeah, we can't be can't be uh, dissatisfied with third. Jamie's got uh, extended his championship lead again, so that's what it's all about. And of course, on to Bathurst now, Jamie. Yeah, hey, the mountain, the, the holy grail in three weeks' time. So um, I think everyone here in pit lane will go away, clean these cars up. They're pretty worn out at the moment after 500 k's, but um, clean them up and get ready for the big one. You came into this weekend with a one-point lead in the championship. You leave with a 32-point lead, so yeah. heading in the right direction. <laughs> it's a crazy roller coaster, isn't it? It's up and down all over the place. Um, personally, um, I didn't put in my, my best performance this weekend, so um, I can... Definitely room to step up there, but um, team did a great job like they always do. And two quick cars this weekend, that's all we can ask for. Enjoy the podium, we'll see you at the mountain, boys. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, Nick Perkett, Garth Tander. I reckon with the pace of that race all day, I can see Smalley should be pretty happy with P4. Oh, yes, yeah, it's, it's um, obviously we'd love to be on the podium. We nearly were there at the end there. That's a bit <laughs> happening, but um, um, yeah, look. Really good speed. Um, you know, we basically from the middle part of the race to the end, the, the gap to the leader was the same. We just lost a bit in the uh, in the middle part of the race there. But uh, you know, to turn around from where we were at Willow Bank a couple of races ago, through Eastern Creek, and then bring it to Sandown, which I actually thought we were going to struggle a bit more than what we uh, than what the speed we've had. So uh, we finished fourth at 500 last year, Larko, and then a couple of, couple of weeks later we had a good weekend. Well, let me ask you, Garth. Just um, I mean, there has been a change uh, turnaround. You can see it's quite evident over the last couple of races. You're clearly moving forward. Is it is it car stuff? Yeah, it's car stuff, it's people stuff, you know, it's a changing the way we do things. Having Tony Dow come on board has been a, a big addition to our team. And, um, you know, we've changed a couple of things in the, in the car and that's made the car a lot better, a lot more responsive to change. So you can actually make a change and you can actually feel it. So, so that's encouraging. Um, you know, I like the way the car feels at the moment. We need to go faster, we know that. Yep. But uh, at least we can actually drive it how we want to drive it now. And I've got to ask you, Nico, mate, it's uh, back on again. You've been off doing the development series. It must feel so good to slide back in and back on the game again. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's quite good to be able to just jump back in, be comfortable in the car. The only issue I've got is a bit of a blister, so I had to change, I had to change gears a bit weird. That was the biggest issue of my race, so um, I'm pretty happy with how it went. Um, Your kids are soft now. Uh, <laughs> too many lattes, apparently. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty happy with how I was in the car. Um, made a few little mistakes, which I'll like to tidy up for Bathurst, but um, from where I was last year, I'm much improved. The, the lap time gap to gas closed, so that's, uh, that's a positive for our combination. Well, a lot of people are right behind you, Blake, for Bathurst, so we look forward to a big showing up there, boys. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Garth Tander and Nick Perkat going up to defend their title after finishing fourth in the 500, which is exactly where they finished a few weeks before the super cheap auto Bathurst 1000 of 2011. So the championship picture now has certainly changed. It's 32 points, the difference between one and two, but Lowndes has now moved up into third ahead of Will Davison and Shane Van Gisbergen. Got 100 points yesterday, got the maximum yesterday and finished with 248 for the weekend, so he remains in fifth spot. Let's uh, get to the podium. Here's Mark Beretta. Well, Dick Smith, Sandown 500, our race 20 winners. Would you please congratulate in first place for Team Vodafone, Craig Lowndes and Warren Love. Our runners-up for Ford Performance Racing, Mark Winterbottom and Stephen Richards. And in third place, Team Vodafone's Jamie Wincup and Paul Dumbrell. Representing Team Vodafone, the winning team, Jeremy Moore. To make the presentation to third place, Andrew Merton, the Customer Development Manager for one of our major sponsors, Cooper's Brewery. Presenting to second place, the Product Manager for Fuel Ethanol, Sugrogen Bioethanol, Vicky Antonidis. Making the presentation to our winning team is Mark Lloyd, the National Sales Manager, Energizer Australia. And presenting the first place trophy, the Victoria Area Manager for Dick Smith, our major sponsor, Philip Grillo. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2012 Dick Smith Sandown 500 race winners.
So there you have it, another trophy for Craig Lowndes. The first trophy for Warren Luff and Team Vodafone have now won nine races straight this season in the championship.